Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that you're looking at running for president. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Look, look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which badly wants you to run. I am officially running for president of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. <laughs> I think that man will be president of the United States right about the time that spaceships come down filled with dinosaurs and red cake. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> Donald Trump will not become president! I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. Donald Trump will never, ever be president. He's moderator, yeah. but apparently, apparently believes that Donald Trump is a clown. President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States! Exclamation point at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump. At least I will go down as a president. You're never going to be president of the United States by insulting your way to the Let's see, I'm at 42 and you're at... We have a key race alert right now. Donald Trump now has reached the number of delegates needed to clinch the Republican presidential nomination. So, right now, Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say... You're not going to be president, all right? It's been fun. It's been great. I love you. But, but, but come on, come on, buddy. Donald Trump, while we project, will win in Kentucky with its eight electoral votes. In Indiana, with its 11 electoral votes. West Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, Kansas, with its six electoral votes. Nebraska, with its five electoral votes. And Wyoming, with its three electoral votes. North Dakota, uh, with its three electoral votes. And South Dakota, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, the state of Montana, Missouri, Ohio, Idaho, North Carolina. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Together, we will make America great again. live hello everyone what's up snake pit what's up to the 199 welcome into cobra cast i am your host d-day cobra and i am freaking happy to see all of you here i see a lot of gifted memberships already holy shit brock legalize adulthood who said one minute until black girl magic um yeah man wow Thank you so much, guys. Uh, you guys are incredible. I, uh, I apologize for missing um, CobraCast on Monday. There was a lot going on. Um, and I even, um, <laughs> I even uh, set the time up wrong tonight. I saw a lot of you calling me out on that. So I, I just hooked up my computer that I've had in Orlando. I hooked it up here in Pensacola. And it's still set to Eastern Time Zone, so it had me all messed up. Thank you, Greg Kirby, with the gifted membership as well. And yeah, it's been there's been so much going on that it's been kind of hard to keep up with. Let me know how the audio is, by the way, because I, again, I just set everything up, so uh, should be good to go. Should be good to go. Um, but uh, thank you, uh, guys and girls, for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. And let's get this party started. Because, man, there's a lot of drama within Big Con right now. Con Inc. is just a disaster. And I, I think it's a bad thing that it's all going on. There could be, it could be good in the long run. But we're going to talk about a little bit of that for sure. Audio is good. Nice. Um, stop or start yapping. Audio is good. Well, that's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. All right. Did the chat? Come on, chat. You got to work. Come on. Come on. How is the chat not working on my screen? I just had it set up. There we go. It finally kicked in. There's the chat. 
Hello, everyone, everybody in the chat, all the wonderful peeps. Brock dropped 50 gifted memberships, and Legalize Adulthood dropped 20 gifted memberships before the damn stream even started. What is going on with you guys? Greg Kirby dropping the bros in the chat. Bro, 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 bro. Um, too ugly to assault, says hi, Jeremy. Oh, my God. Um, we got Vinzinger says, sup, Jeremy. The more nonsense the right starts to do, the more well-prepared uh, we'll, we'll be towards them. Um, Great Tank says, um, everyone should watch the Byron Donalds interview with Stephen A. Smith. It's an hour long, and it's really good. Hail the snake pit. Hail the 199. Hail Jeremy. Steel Leg of History says, thanks for your kindness and support. My new laptop just arrived today. Been busy setting it up. Can't wait to learn how to do intros. Be blessed. Congratulations, brother. I'm so happy everything's going good for you. Um, Briar for 20. Jeremy, when in the 90s did you go through your wigger face? <laughs> God dang it. Uh, so this would have been in the... Uh, I guess 92, 93 kind of era, you know? This is like back when Me Against the World. Came. No, actually, it was before then. This is when, um, what year did Snoop Dogg's album Doggy Style come out? What, what year was that? Was that like 1990, 1991? And then, of course, Dr. Dr. Dre's The Chronic. That, was, that came out right before Doggy Style came out. So when was that? That was like 90, 91 or something like that's when Doggy Style was out, right? I think it was like, it was early 90s. Okay, 92. Okay. But anyway, that was kind of that whole phase, like early 90s. I was way into rap music, all of that. Um, and then I was a huge Tupac fan. And of course, Tupac died in 96, I think. 96 is when Tupac uh, died. So, yeah, there you go, uh, Br'er. So that's funny as hell. That's funny as hell. Um, Rob Johnson says, racist much, Jeremy? I mean, yeah. You know what? As a matter of fact, that reminds me, okay? I, I have never seen a better way to handle an accusation, okay? Like, this is, I watched this live. And I texted her as soon as it was over, Melanie Mack. And I told her, I'm like, you are the coolest person ever. I was like, I, I, this, her, she went on to the, 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 uh, Lowell Cal live podcast with Keemstar. And of course, Rich from Review Tech hates Melanie Mack's guts and her response. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hail to Melanie Mack. This is how you handle these left-wing lunatics and their accusations. It, it, she's hilarious. Listen to this. I want to see the receipt for that. Uh, me defending somebody, because I'm sure they were saying more than just looks. I'm sure they were calling her homophobic. I'm sure they were saying that she's a bigot. I'm sure they're saying incorrect. all this other fucking shit. Uh, bear, so bear, I was defending bear, that. How, is that, how is that incorrect? You were mock mocking a trans woman incessantly and laughing in her face. I watched the clip. Yeah, where, that is where, true. Where, I did. <laughs> okay, so that how are you not anti LGBTQ when you do something like I, that? I am anti LGBTQ. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rich. So what now? <laughs> I want to see the receipt for that. Dude, she just like these clowns. <laughs> One more time, just so everybody can understand it. Like she just owns it. This is what you have to do with these clowns. Just own it one more time. Uh, me defending somebody because I'm sure they were saying more than just looks. I'm sure they were calling her homophobic. I'm sure they were saying that she's a bigot. I'm sure they're saying incorrect. all this other fucking shit. Uh, bear, so bear, I was defending that. How, is that, how is that incorrect? You were mock mocking a trans woman incessantly and laughing in her face. I watched the clip. Yeah, that where, is true. Where, I did. Okay, so that how are you not anti-lgbtq when you do something like I, that i am anti-lgbtq okay that's fine that's all i wanted to know okay good okay rich so what now <laughs> it's such a good so again man this is how you have to handle this nonsense and of course you know melanie like she's she'll have like later on or she gave more context to what she's saying but you don't have to no one deserves any context for anything. If you're going to label me something without doing any research, then I'll just own it. Who cares? Who cares what 
what anybody thinks at the end of the day. Who cares what anybody thinks? That's really what it comes down to. And that's kind of what a lot of the theme of I want tonight's show to be is we really have to stop giving a fuck about what social justice freaks think about anything because they have no power if you don't give them power. They have none. I've been called racist a lot this week just on Twitter, all right? I mean, and that's that's nothing new, but I've probably added to it. <laughs> I've probably added it, added to it just a little bit when uh, you know, I post like a meme like this. Uh, so <laughs> first of all, I'll show you what I was responding to first, okay? So I was responding to this tweet right here. And um, this is something to do with like the Gamergate stuff and the black girl gamers and all this bullshit. And this person right here quote tweets their tweet and says, it's incredibly telling that the quote tweets are once again full of knuckle dragging bigoted white men. Sorry, real gamers who do nothing but try and fight progress in the gaming space. It's pathetic. Black girl gamers don't owe anyone any kind of statement or apology. So I responded with this meme right here. And uh, boy, I had some people calling me racist. I had some people calling me racist. <laughs> it's a funny meme, okay? It's a funny meme. Laugh at it. It's a great meme. And a lot of people are like, you're racist. Okay, and what are you going to do about it? It's, it's, it's such nonsensical. I'll make fun of white people too. I'll make fun of black people. I make fun of everybody. I don't care who you are. All right. There's funny shit. No matter what race you are, there's funny shit to be had no matter what race you are. All right. It's funny. People need to laugh at shit. Who cares? Who cares what, who cares what anybody thinks? Who cares? No one should care. The only thing I care about is the people that support me and give me the opportunity that I have. That's who I care about. I care about my audience. I don't care about people that don't care about me or the content or the things that I'm interested in. I don't care. Then you have this right here from Dana White, which is, this is a fantastic, it, this kind of puts it in perspective right here. If I cared what people thought, I'd still be a bellman at the Boston Harbor mm. Hotel. You know what I mean? That's the truth. If I really cared what people thought, I'd still be doing that. I have found um, such freedom in that when you let go. I mean, it sounds like you've never had it, which is a blessing. Um, I live one of those lives. I posted this the other day. Create a life that you can't wait to wake up to. I saw that. I live that life. I literally, I hate to sleep. I hate sleeping. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I hate sleeping. How much sleep do you get? Not much. What's that? Four. Four or five a night. I hate sleep. I love every minute of my life. Love every minute of it. I can't wait to wake up tomorrow. I can't wait to start tomorrow. And, and when, you, when you really feel that way, I, I just don't, I really don't give a shit about a lot of things. I love it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Dana White is killing it right now um and that type of that type of mindset is truly like the people that are out there accusing you of being ist and isms and this and that and the other and look it's happening on the right just as much as the left right now the right is kind of overrun with identity politics right now as well it's really bad it's really bad and um we we really really have to just get to a point where who cares what Anybody that builds their narrative around identity politics thinks. Who really cares? And uh, that's where my mind is. That's where it's been for a long time. And then I get inspired by people like Melanie Mack when I see her going there and she just owns it. She's like, I don't care. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you label me as. It doesn't matter. And uh, that's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic to witness. Um, and uh, so good on her and uh, good on everybody else that's out there doing the, the same thing because that's exactly what they will do. If they see that it affects you by calling you all of these names, 
if they see that you're constantly trying to explain it or trying to go, well, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. Uh, then they just pounce even more. And that's exactly what they're, they're looking to do. They're looking to have an impact and bother you and frustrate you. Disco Cobra for 50 says, uh, would you say you got into uh, new metal back in the 90s? Uh, I'm in my early 30s, so I didn't quite get into that scene uh, right away. Uh, it was on its way uh, out when I really started to listen to bands like Limp Bizkit, Corn, Linkin Park, and so on. Still love them. Well, um, I was... I was into, I didn't really listen to Corn that much. Uh, I did like Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park, Creed, um, all those guys, all those bands. Um, I didn't listen to Corn that much. Uh, I know they were very popular at that point in time, but uh, I, uh, I, I listened to everything when I was younger, though. I mean, I was a huge Guns N' Roses fan, Metallica, uh, Def Leppard. Uh, I, I even, and then that was like that, that whole era, uh, Stone Temple Pilots. I still listen to Stone Temple Pilots all the time. I love Stone Temple Pilots. Um, Interstate Love Song is one of my favorite songs and, uh, I love STP. They are great. Um, and yeah, so, um, but I listened to all those bands too. And, and I, I don't know if I was like, I, I, was I, uh, as hardcore into that type of music as others, it's hard to say. I mean, I, again, I listen to country, I listen to rock, I listen to rap, um, I listen to pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. Uh, Atomic Patriot for twenty says Melanie is based. Hail Jeremy, uh, been a minute. Uh, I'm unbelievably thankful that Matt Walsh took time out of his day to cover uh, and save the game industry single-handedly. Trump 2024. Let's make gaming great again. MAGA. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, look, the whole thing right now that's been going on with uh, the Daily Wire, with Steven Crowder, um, it's to me, it makes everything look bad. Now, I've taken a lot of time to do my due diligence on the entire Steven Crowder situation. You had Jared Monroe, who formerly was called Not Gay Jared. Um, and he obviously left the company a while back. And then he recently uploaded a video talking about how wrong he was done by Crowder and these NDAs and all of this other stuff. And then Steven Crowder and his team came out with a statement today. And, um, after a lot of soul searching, I can I have an official response. Uh, after seeing the video from Jared Monroe and now hearing Steven Crowder's response, I've taken a lot of time to process everything and, and understand it. And I can now confidently say that I'd rather play Helldivers 2 than listen to any more of this bullshit because that's exactly what it is. I don't get so stupid, man. The whole thing is just... At its core, and, and I will I will talk about it at its core here in just a second. Uh, as soon as I read Legalize Adulthoods 199, a proper 199 from Legalize Adulthood. Holy shit. Dave Rubin says he's sorry for what happened in Baltimore. He just loves ramming the pole so much. Things got out of hand. Trump 2024 all the way, baby. Oh my God. The fact that we're that the fact that we're taking a tragedy uh, and getting a Dave Rubin joke out of it makes me so proud of this community. <laughs> I bet you thought I was gonna denounce it. It makes me so proud of this community. Taking a tragic situation and still making a Dave Rubin gay joke out of it. That's what the snake pit's all about. Thank you, Legalize Adulthood. <laughs> um, but uh, let me, uh, I do want to kind of, I'm not going to get into all the, the details of all this Steven Crowder stuff. What I will say, I don't like Steven Crowder. I don't like the Daily Wire. Um, I don't like, I'm not a fan. I'm, I, I have no dog in the fight. I don't, I don't care. Um, but in terms of this Steven Crowder specifically with Jared Monroe, from what I've seen, all I will say is when you are a man getting involved in another man's divorce, I'm not sure I have any respect for you at that point in time. I just, I, I see that as like such a line that you don't cross. Um, 
divorces are nasty. They're ugly. There's two sides. Each, each person has their perspective. I don't know if anyone's right or anyone's wrong because from one perspective, they're going to have their perspective and the other side's going to have their perspective. And the fact that this Jared Monroe dude, who I don't know much about, is getting involved in his former boss's divorce is very fucking nasty. Very nasty. So, again, and I say that as someone, I'm not a fan of Steven Crowder. I'm not a fan of Steven Crowder. But the dude's getting involved in a divorce, and that's just, that's next level fucked up in my opinion. But from that perspective, I don't care really. It, it, it To me, the whole thing is embarrassing. And then you add the, the whole Candace Owens uh, Daily Wire thing that's going on, and that is nasty. That's getting really ugly. And I, <laughs> and then uh, on that note, and this is kind of my bigger thing is like all of this stuff with Big Con going on right now. It's it's a bad look. It's a very bad look. You've got people that are trying to create more and more trouble. And at the end of the day, and the reason I put the thumbnail the way that I put it was. Donald Trump is literally fighting for the future of America right now. And the people that should be on his side are fighting amongst each other over nonsensical bullshit. And I think that kind of puts it all in perspective. And to be fair, the Daily Wire as a company and at the big personalities of that company. And I know it's not fair to just point blank, say like the entire daily wire, because I understand just like with geeks and gamers, there's, you know, different personalities at geeks and gamers and every, every, every all of my opinions don't reflect geeks and gamers. But I, I, with the daily wire, like they clearly wanted Ron DeSantis as the nominee. They clearly wanted him and they clearly didn't get him because he was never going to be the nominee. And by the way, call a spade a spade Ron DeSantis is back in Florida kicking ass and taking names right now and I'm happy for him and you're peaked in high school Ron okay stay in high school all right don't go any further stay in high school stay in Florida and continue to walk around with your letterman jacket you're the coolest guy in school all right you've got a fast car all the chicks like you stay in Florida stay in high school Ron okay that's it just stay in high school Peaked in high school, Ron. Stay in Florida. You're back where you belong, and you're kicking ass, and I love that. Um, now, getting to this right here, Ben Shapiro was on with Piers Morgan. I find this to be astonishing that Ben Shapiro handled this situation like he did. This is astonishing to me. I can't believe he handled it like this. I'm going to tell you how he, and again, Ben Shapiro, not a dumb person, but when you are so emotionally tied into something, it clearly clouds your judgment. In my humble opinion, Ben Shapiro, he doesn't just dislike Candace Owens. I think he hates Candace Owens. I think he hates Candace Owens passionately, passionately. This is insane how badly he handled this situation right here. I can't believe how badly he handled this. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the centre of a very uh, high-profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. That's... and it, There's more to this, but... Oh, my God, like... I can't believe he handled it that bad. Here's how you handle it. Here's how I've handled situations in the past. There's people that I've you know, been streamed with, people that I've, they're no longer geeks and gamers for whatever reason. When you asked about it, here's how you answer it. When the, Ben Shapiro should have said this. 
Well, yeah, thank you, Pierce. And obviously, you know, Candace Owens is no longer with Daily Wire. She's gone her separate way. Um, we're obviously going to go our way, and we wish her nothing but the best of luck. She's done a lot of great work for us over the years, um, and it's just unfortunate that we had to, you know, go our separate ways due to some behind-the-scenes stuff that obviously we don't want to get into here publicly because that wouldn't be um, right. But we wish her the best of luck, and, um, you know, hopefully she continues to succeed as, uh, you know, we hope we continue to succeed as well. That's it. That's all he had to fucking do. But instead, the pure fucking hatred of her. You see it. You see it. He, he is about to explode right there. He's about to explode. He can't handle it. Look, he can't handle it. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints. No nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. He is so mad. Holy shit, dude. This man is furious. He, he's about to explode. Let's let him continue. Can I ask? Can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not. You can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them. However, contentious. I mean, su suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm Why didn't you say that in the beginning? It's clear. Ben, stop treating the audience like they're stupid. We all know that you had a hand in her being fired. Quit doing that. We all know that you had a hand in this. We all know Bring that. In firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Jeremy Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. I've never called for Candace or anyone else for that matter to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, it's, I'm just not going to labor this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because uh, her comments had been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm, I'm not going to comment on this, Pierce. Okay. Jeez, that was so bad. That was so bad. <sighs> you have a responsibility as a leader, as an owner, as a founder, as the number one personality at this company to answer these questions in a respectable way. You have a responsibility. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side, I will give Jeremy Boring a massive amount of credit because he went on a uh, Lauren Chin did a Twitter spaces and Jeremy Boring went in there and he handled a lot of questions from a lot of people. And he still danced around a lot of stuff. Uh, he did at one point, though, even Lauren Chin was trying. She's like, because there was this whole thing about Christ is king and, and people that are saying it and all this stuff. And, you know, he made these generalizations. And then Lauren Chin point blank said, she goes, well, do you think I'm anti-Semitic? And he's like, well, uh, I, I don't know you that well or blah, blah, blah. Like he couldn't even say that she wasn't. And he not it's Lauren freaking Chin. It, she's done work with the Daily Wire before. Um, but it, it, overall, though, he did go in there. He actually talked to Nick Fuentes. Um, they had a, a really cordial discussion, um, and that was really credit to Jeremy Boring for that, um, to even have a conversation. Um, and I can only imagine that little Ben was furious with Jeremy Boring because – Jeremy Boring point blank said, like, I would love to see a discussion between <laughs> Nick Fuentes and Ben Shapiro. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, little Ben was probably so mad when that happened. I can only imagine what the group chats were like after that. Um, but, yeah, uh, there is, like, almost zero chance that that will ever happen. 
Um, but it, it was funny. It was really, really funny. But again, I give him, I give, I give Jeremy Boring credit. Like he did go in there. He took questions from people that were very curious. He t- he tried to explain himself. And at the end of the day, I, I think that's all that anybody really wants anyone to do. Like for me, anyway, I can only speak for myself. All I want people to do is answer questions and give some perspective on things. That's really all that I would want from anyone. And Ben Shapiro is, I, I, I feel like he's at a point where he's so big now that he just feels way corporate. And the fact that Jeremy Boring, who is the, the CEO, I think he's the CEO of Daily Wire, the fact that he just jumped on a random Twitter spaces that he wasn't really invited to, but there was a lot of discussion and was willing to at least just talk and, and everything like that, I thought was pretty damn cool of him. So again, man, I just call balls and strikes. Um, so I'll criticize Daily Wire when I feel they need to be criticized. I will criticize Steven Crowder and anyone else in you know, Con Inc. for that matter. Um, but ultimately, the whole thing for me is that I feel that Donald Trump right now is literally fighting for his freedom. He's fighting for his entire past and his future and the future of the United States of America. And we got a bunch of clowns sitting here arguing over the dumbest shit imaginable. That's that's my that's my problem with it all. And we're going to talk about all that stuff with Trump here in just a moment. Um, we got Dom H450 and says, RIP to the fallen officer in New York. He actually lived a, a town over from me. Really sad. Trump said he's going to the wake tomorrow in Long Island. That's awesome of him. Definitely going to try to go to this tomorrow. Yes, uh, absolutely, Dom. And let I have that pulled up right here, a story about that about Donald Trump has said that he is going to, I think he's going to make an appearance there. So right here is that story. Um, Breaking Donald Trump to fly to New York to honor Officer Jonathan Diller. He called the slain NYPD officer's um, widow personally to facilitate, facilitate paying off her mortgage alongside tunnels to towers. The media doesn't want you to know this. Officer Diller is survived by his wife and their one-year-old son. President Trump being the leader that the United States of America needs. That is our President Trump right there. That is the President Trump, and it's just fantastic. Um, Jonathan was killed by a criminal who's been arrested 21 times by the NYPD, including nine felonies, yet was released by a Democrat because of course he was. And, you know, this this is another thing that got me in a little bit of hot water uh, with, with some of these clowns uh, right here. Let me see if I can find this tweet. Um, uh, let me see. Right. Is it here? Yeah. So uh, this is the, the Baltimore uh, mayor. And uh, I just kind of quote tweeted. And I'm like, Netflix presents Baltimore's mayor. And I got a lot of people like, oh, my God, this is such a racist thing you're saying. This is so racist, Jeremy. I can't believe it. Um, well, he's a Democrat. Uh, he's a person with TDS, and I did found an article. I found an article right here that was written by a Baltimore uh, website, and it says that uh, I'm not a big fan of Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. All evidence suggests that he lacks the administrative expertise, experience, and quite possibly the integrity, politically speaking, to save the city of Baltimore. If that doesn't sound like a Netflix mayor, then I don't know what is. Literally says the guy has no experience. He has no expertise. He has no integrity. Yet he was, he was, uh, you know, he was voted in as mayor, interestingly enough. And, uh, of course, you know, of course I was getting called racist and all that shit, whatever. Um, but... At the end of the day, uh, oh, and uh, uh, I know Angry Joe has said something to me. I just responded with this picture of uh, of the mayor with his uh, Black Lives Matter mask, uh, staying very safe, masked up with his Black Lives Matter mask. And so I don't know anything about the guy other than the fact that, um, you know, 
looked like a Netflix version of uh, Baltimore's mayor. And uh, I'll stand by that. I'll stand by that. <laughs> it's just so dumb. Uh, and, uh, dude, the, the whole, like, the DEI stuff, like, I saw Jamel Hill, like, basically, like, why don't you just say the N-word instead of DEI? We didn't make up DEI. The left-wing lunatics did. Now you're upset because we're using DEI? We're talking about DEI stuff? Uh, it's, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, McCock dropped 10 gifted memberships. You trolled the hell out of Beardo the other night on Tuesday night's main event. The way Beardo <laughs> read it out, it was so good. I was dying when I when Beardo read that out. I was like, holy crap, that's amazing. Um, we almost got 2,000 people just here on YouTube. Smash the melee button. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you on, and your time. Um, you guys are the best. And I hope you are enjoying tonight's show so far. We're kind of talking about everything going on in conservative media right now and in Con Inc. and everything because it is pretty bad um, what we are seeing. It's not getting any better. And if you kind of look at a lot of the stuff that we've been seeing from President Trump just over these past few days. Now, obviously, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk much about what happened with uh, President Trump over the weekend. Um, but I see Buford T. Justice with 10 gifted memberships and Hayden Wayne with 10 gifted memberships. Holy crap. The gifties are flying here tonight. Thank you guys so much. You mad lads. You absolute mad lads. Um, but obviously, President Trump just continues to win. They can't stop this man. It doesn't matter how hard they try. He continues to win. And I got to show you guys this tweet right here from ALX because it, it, it really does put this into perspective right here. So this is in uh, November of 2022. Truth Social, the right-wing social network, is facing two federal investigations in an uncertain financial future. But experts say that the app itself has only grown more influential in conservative circles ahead of the midterms. Would you like the update? Trump's media company is valued at $8 billion after surging in the first day of trades more than the New York Times and Mattel. Trump for the win, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, they can't stop him. They can't stop Trump. They can't. They, it, it's just, it's a constant, like they're constantly losing their minds over this man just making great decision after great decision after great decision. It's so good. And it only gets better. And I saw this clip. Let me find it really quick. Is there somebody on the Bill Maher show, like they just could not comprehend that he keeps winning. He keeps winning because he's the man. Uh, Twitter video is kind of giving me fits right now, and I don't know why. Uh, Twitter, like, they need to fix their video, bro. They really do. Um, I don't know why the Twitter video is is uh, not good, but for some reason, Elon, come on, bro. I got a lot of these. Uh, I got a lot of these uh, bookmarks from um, P Diddy. Uh, P Diddy is uh, the new uh, Epstein, apparently. I can't find this clip. I'll have to. It was on Bill Maher, but it was some person that was just complaining about Trump, and they were basically like, "He he's too lucky." Like Donald Trump has been a billionaire for as long as I've been alive. I think at some point in time, it's not luck. He's just a damn good businessman. It's that simple. Like this is not complicated. Let me see if I can play this clip, though, because this is a great clip if I can uh, get it to play. Hopefully there's no audio on this. There probably is audio, but I'm going to try to... I may have to mute it. Um, you're all going to love this one right here, okay? You're all going to love this one. Here we go. I'm going to mute it right here, but as you see, guy with a Biden shirt walking up seeing $4.29. Gas prices 179 when Trump left office. Hmm, what do we got here? Taking a Mentos and... Mentos fresh and full of life. Fresh goes better than Mentos fresh day. Fresh goes... <laughs> <laughs> Us. 
The Fresh Maker. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get hit for this, but I'm going to try it. It doesn't matter what comes. Fresh goes better in life. With mental fresh and full of life. Nothing gets to you. Stay in fresh, stay in cool. With mental fresh and full of life. <laughs> oh my god it's so good it's so good i'm crying dude i'm crying laughing <laughs> i will retweet this i will retweet it right now oh, <laughs> oh man let me see let me make sure i didn't get a copyright warning did i get a copyright warning no copyright warning. We are clear. If I can get through that, if I can get through that with the cut without copy getting hit with copyright, I will um I will make that part of my intro. I will make that part of my intro. I don't know why the chat will not pop up. Come on, chat, work with me, bro. Uh <laughs> it's so good though. Uh all right. So let's go back to bookmarks. We have a lot more to talk about tonight. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. I hope you all are enjoying CobraCast 199. Um, we have a lot to discuss, including Don Lemon. All right. Look at this. Don Lemon having a tough time right now, ladies and gentlemen. Don Lemon says he would consider joining CNN again if they offered him a Tesla truck and equity in the company. This comment comes as Lemon's show on X continues to fail miserably. Let's listen to what Don Lemon has to say. I think I might be open to it only if they offered me a Tesla truck and equity in the <laughs> and that I could go to <laughs> see how dumb, how stupid that is. Um, listen, here's what I'll say. I don't think that that is in the realm of possibility. Right. I didn't actually think that um, that I would end up end up back on CNN in my same studio working, you know, with the same or appearing in a studio with the same group of people who were my camera people and studio people and, and what have you. So that was like a little surreal. I don't think it's in the realm of possibilities. It, it, it would depend on the offer. Um, I don't know if I would want to do a show five days a week or what have you, but it would just, this man's career is dead. It's absolutely dead. There's nothing left. Like you're done. I said this right when the Elon Musk interview dropped, I, I said it. He will never be more relevant than he is the day the Elon Musk interview drops. And I haven't looked at his views on YouTube, but let, let me see if I can find let me see if I can find his YouTube channel. Let's look. Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Okay. Let's look at his YouTube views. Um okay, so right here. Videos. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Don Lemon's YouTube channel. Where's the Elon interview? Okay, Elon Musk interview. 1.3 million views on his... E oh, you guys can't see this yet. Hang on. I mean... Um, all right, right here. Look at this, okay? So his Elon Musk it has 1.3 million views on his Elon Musk interview. The next eight... 858397 talking about Elon Musk being racist. 20,000, 38,000 talking about Candace Owens. 1918, 756 views. 1200, 1800, 40,000. 500 views, 700 views, 6,000, 1600. Don Lemon's over. It's over. Don Lemon has nothing left. It's completely over for him. There's nothing left. That's what I said. I said it. I said point blank. He has nothing. He has nothing left. Once the interview with, with uh, Elon Musk drops, it's over. That's it. It's the end of, it's end of the road for him. And that's exactly what's happened. Uh, and he deserves it. He is a piece of garbage. An absolute piece of garbage. And I guess he probably wants CNN to hire him back. But that's just not going to happen. Um, and it shouldn't happen. But, okay, uh, you know what? I'm just doing this for, for you guys because I know how much you want to yell at me. Uh, 
because let's be real we've had a pretty good stream we got over 2,000 people here um, there's been a lot of super chats there's been a lot of gifted memberships which I really appreciate and so now it's time for you guys to be pretty mad at me if you are okay with that if you're okay with that you let me know I apologize in advance single social tie. I had severe PTSD from this. I, I contemplated suicide. It got really bad. You feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life. And it's so isolating. <laughs> and terrifying. It's horrifying. I'm so terrifying. <laughs> it's really hard. Dude, shout out, shout out to C3P meme. Uh, holy crap, dude. <laughs> I see the chat. No, Jeremy, you fig. That was rough. That one was rough. Um, all right. So we got this one, though. I'll make up for it. Okay, I'll make up for it. So we've got this one right here. Um, so I'm sure you guys have seen that rabbi that... Uh, What's his name? Rabbi Sh uh, Shmuley or whatever? That guy's lost his mind, okay? Well, he was on with Alex Jones today. Let's listen in. The left wants to arrest conservatives. They want to put Trump in prison. All right, Rabbi, thank you so much. I don't want to keep our guest host too long. I appreciate can I, it. Wait, wait, can, I, can I promote my two books? You promoted a lot of your powders, man. I love, kosher, I, I kosher, love kosher butt Jesus, plugs for pedophiles. I so, you know, I told you I'm giving those to you for free because you seem to really need it. So that's a gift. You don't have to plug you that. Know, it's coming just to you. Will you help address. me fit my uh, butt plug? Uh, however, <laughs> you, you, you know, are you a rabbi butt plug? Boat, whatever floats your boat, Alex Jones, it seems that you're jealous of my sex life very deeply. And Never I don't want you to be jealous. <laughs> I don't, I, I want to, you know, it seems that your skills in that area may be a little You're right. You're right. I, I'm, so not as, I wanna, I, I, I'm, I'm not as good as uh, I want, doing lap dances with my grandchildren. I want to promote. Hail Alex Jones. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Like, what is happening right now? Like, what is happening within this, this world of, like, the non-leftist world is kind of like, I, I view it as, if you're not a crazy leftist, you, you should 1,000% be focused on getting Trump back in office. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why that's a complicated thing. I don't understand it. Like, if you just, if I'm putting it in perspective, okay, if I'm putting it in perspective, um, I'm going to show you this right here. This puts it in perfect perspective. Uh, hang on. I'm getting somebody that's calling me. I'm going to put him on the spot. I'm going to put him on the spot. All right. Hi, a Valiant Renegade. I'm live and you're on speakerphone. Oh. Amazing. I forgot you were doing a D-Day Cobra cast tonight. Um, so Say hello to I'm the snake pit. The show, yeah, my apologies to you and to all of the wonderful chat. Keep watching and super chat the crap out of Jeremy tonight. Uh, he's going to be huge in 2024 in this election year. Uh, but given that, I can't say what I want to tell you. I know it. I know uh, you can't. On the air. But there are some updates, some major updates. So okay. Y'all get ready for some new news on uh, Gamergate 2.0 that will directly play into some of this political stuff going on this year. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's go, baby. All right. I'll, I'll text you in the background. Keep doing your Cobra cast. I'm actually going to jump on the live chat now. You guys hit that like, subscribe, and share this <laughs> shit out right now. Later, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Hail Valiant Renegade. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm interested to see what his update is for sure. Um, I saw Ripa in the chat too. Uh, shout out to young Ripa. Hail the Ripaverse. And uh, all my peeps are up in here, so I appreciate you guys. Okay, this is what puts it in perspective for me right here. This puts it in perspective, all right? <clears throat> Democrats don't want Trump to win in 2024. Republicans don't want Trump to win in 2024. 
And then you just see it goes on. The U.N. doesn't want it. Fact checkers don't want Trump to win. Putin doesn't want Trump to win. Gun grabbers don't want Trump to win. Pedophiles don't want Trump to win. The cartel doesn't want Trump to win. The deep state, the WEF, the WHO, NATO. This is the exact reason Trump must win in 2024. When all of these People do not want you to win. That is exactly why he must win. And that is the bottom line. Puts it in perspective right there. Love this tweet. And yeah, man, with all the stuff going on with uh, Daily Wire, with Big Con, Con Inc., whatever you want to call them, uh, it's uh, it's not good. It's not good. And um, are they, is there some type of like, I saw, like, on Crowder, they were basically like, this is a plot against Steven and all this shit. It's like, I don't know if I believe that as much as, maybe within, like, I don't know. I, I feel like it didn't need a 30-minute uh, response, personally, but, I mean, whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, I would have, if that was me responding, I just would have been like, um, hey, uh, there's some things that were said, and... This is not a good thing in our opinion. And, oh, man, is my fucking camera die on me again? Of course it did. Why does my camera always die? Like, it always... I, I, I guess I've got to do a software update on my camera. So you guys are going to have to give me just a minute. And uh, let me see if I can get it fired back up. And uh, we'll see if it works. Is it going to work? It is back. Okay, we're back. Um, but, yeah. So um, I, I simply just would have said, like, uh, a former employee is now trying to involve uh, himself within the divorce of Stephen and his, um, you know, wife or former or ex-wife or whatever. And that should kind of give you all the information you need to know about this individual. If that's all you say and you leave it at that, I think anybody that's not biased is going to go like, yeah, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. So I'm I'm. I'm going to side with Steven on that. That's really all they needed to say. All the other bullshit was just not necessary in my opinion. You know what I mean? But at, at, at its core, I'm ignoring all the other bullshit about it and looking at the one thing that, to me, crosses every line. A former employee is getting involved with Steven Crowder's divorce proceedings, and that is fucked up. And that's really all I can, that's the only thing I can say about it that makes me go, yeah, uh, I don't believe anything this Jared person is saying because you're involving yourself in a divorce with kids. And then he says, uh, as a matter of fact, and I'll show, I'll show you exactly the, the, the thing that he said too today that, uh, that I did not like. Um, he basically was like, uh, hang on, what's his name? Jared Monroe. He tweeted this out because I guess this is a screenshot or something uh, right here. Um, he's, he's threatening to sue the quartering too, by the way. He says, I stand by this text to Hillary Crowder, and you would too if you knew what I do. Release my NDA. And it says, I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. That really, really disturbs me or something like that. Um, if, kids are, if kids are involved and kids are in danger... I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that an NDA does not hold you back from getting involved in a situation where children are at harm. So if children are in harm's way, your NDA does not stop you from saying anything, if I'm not mistaken. And you've already broken your NDA by this video you made. So if there's no... If there's nothing, if there's if if it's not something that's law breaking, then it's not your business. That's the bottom line there. So that's where I stand on it, and uh, it's crappy, man. It's really crappy. So um, yeah, he should stay out of people's marriages and their divorces and all of that. I think that's bad, bad news. Valiant Renegade in the house. Valiant Renegade. Uh, Valiant says, "Dude, I was calling you. Where are you at?" 
Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, Valiant. Valiant's doing great work, by the way. He's an awesome guy. He's an awesome guy. So we appreciate Valiant Renegade. All right, where are we at? I got to catch up on a few. Uh, let's see. We got some memberships that I missed, I think. Brian James dropped five gifted memberships. Thank you so much. Replicant Patriot for five gifted memberships. Thank you. Um, and I think that's the gifties that I missed, if I'm not mistaken, I think. And then we've got uh, Mr. 30 Below for 20. Says 20 bucks to my favorite white figure. Had to say that kind of slowly you know i'm not as i'm not as good at that as ryan um he says it pretty easily um bastard luigi says tired of crowder and daily wire news uh this dono is for managed democracy i'll see you in space nom cowboy remember the trees speak binary yeah i i've been anxious to get back on um playing hell divers tomorrow on d-day cobra 199 Helldivers 2 is happening, all right? Ryan is playing. Um, I think he's only going to play for like two hours, but I'm pretty sure we're going to play well beyond that. We'll probably have Hailstorm or somebody tag in after Ryan leaves. Can't wait. Cannot wait. And uh, Lover of Green for $10 says, uh, for the past year, I worried about uh, Kufians uh, spamming my feed. I don't give a fuck about them or their N95s. They can live in Fauci land forever. Let's focus on winning 2024. God bless the 199. Shout out to you, Lover of Green. Somebody sent me a screenshot of Lover of Green. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I want to say you were on... It was Nick Ricada's stream, I think. Shout out to Nick Ricada. Uh, you you <laughs> super chat to Ricada. Uh, who was it? Was it Low Watermark? By the way, low Watermark, I, I haven't seen Low Watermark in my streams in a while, but I know he supports Ryan and other people, and that's fine. He supported us forever and a day. Low Watermark's awesome, but you were like, you something like, you should go over to the CobraCast199. He gets like 400 gifted memberships a night, and that was so funny. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, thank you for the uh, screenshots and the love for green. Always appreciate you guys shouting out um, the 199 wherever you go. Um, really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Sheep City and... I'm going to throttle you when I see you in Vegas for that cursed Taylor Biden clip. Hell yes. Thank you, Sheep City. And looking forward to Vegas. Vegas is going to be awesome. Um, and uh, so that week, like it's a Cobra cast is going to be weird when I'm traveling, but I am going to do it from the road. I, I don't know how good the signal is going to be, but we're going to be doing a truck video from the road uh, when I'm traveling. And hopefully, you know, God, these I am driving. I am driving from Florida to Vegas and back. And my gosh, the gas prices are so brutal right now. I'm not looking forward to those gas prices because it's bad. But um, I'm not flying. I just, I'm not flying. Uh, I don't like flying. I don't want to fly, especially now with the DEI hires. Not going to happen, man. Not going to happen. I will stay right I'll, I'll be on the ground. Um, Johnny the Wizkid says, do you know if an investigation is done on the bridge? Um, well, I know that the FBI claims that they got an investigation done within a few hours, yet they still can't figure out who left cocaine in the White House. Um, they can't find uh, really anything that pertains to any real national security problems within the United States of America. But they got that investigation on the bridge done within a few hours and had definitive answers. Pretty amazing job, FBI. Um, now, do I think there's anything uh, funny business going on with the with the bridge situation? No, I do believe it was probably a freak accident, but I don't believe that I don't believe anything the fucking FBI has to say. And if anything, the FBI basically come out saying, yeah, we did a full investigation. All good. No problem here. As soon as I saw that, that's when I started doubting. Prior to that, I watched it happen. I used common sense, and I felt like, okay, mechanical failure, or they had power problems. Uh, I feel like that it was just a freak accident. And then, and then the FBI's like, yep, we've done a full investigation. We've seen no signs of terrorism. Everything's great. And I'm like, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. When the FBI comes out that quick, the same FBI that raided Mar-a-Lago, by the way, the same FBI that raided Mar-a-Lago, uh, 
when that FBI says that everything's good, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Maybe something else is going on here. But in general, I don't think there was anything. Um, Green 7 Force is celebrating my 50th with the 199 tonight. Well, look at there, man. That is awesome. Happy birthday. Thank you for being here. We ho I hope you're having a good time watching us. Um, let's see. We got Haas Bon Adventure. This is a screw con ink. I'm done with them. Bring on Nick Fuentes, Candace Owens, 2028. Make America Christian again. Down with the Daily Wire, the blaze useless. Um, too ugly to assault for two dollars says Faith No More Epic. Great song. Great song. I haven't heard that song in a long time. I actually may download that. I have not heard that song in a long time. The Diddler, 199, gotta run. Uh, Briar says, uh, make Christian soldiers great again. Bane Zero, Daily Wire is all balls, no strikes. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. A BRG to far says, uh, thank you for not discussing C Steven Crowder. Well, I did a little bit. I did a little bit. But my point is, is I don't really care. Um I don't really care that, about the details. DM says, please watch a couple of minutes of uh, uh, Florida ATV. Uh, let's see. L Liam or Lamy uh, commentary in the comment section was pure gold. I'll have to look and see. Um, 50 Shades of Grayson says, I got 10 shares of Donald J. Trump, baby, 199. Jared the America says, Trump is Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Trump. DM says, uh, the salt man said he was stealing your views, LOL. Yeah, that was funny. So again, man, nothing makes me happier than to, to hear that. Well, I mean, every stream, regardless of like, I know, like, last night, uh, Valiant Renegade and John F. Trent were on, and they were just like, man, you guys had the best, you know, you know chat and the best community and all that. And, um, you know, Salty, uh, I, di I didn't go live on Friday. And uh, so I put this tweet out and uh, said, no Cobra Cast tonight. I'm traveling all day. I'll be back on the grind tomorrow. And then Salty says, this is why all the 199 piled into my secret stream. Hail bigots. And I was like, dude, you guys are awesome, man, because... Again, Salty is a fucking legend, and um, obviously Salty uh, loves the 199, and the fact that you guys are all in the chat shouting out the 199, and this is kind of how, like, Salty's legend has grown, too, is, like, people are always bringing up, like, Salty Army, Salty is Legion, you know, let the salt flow. It's going to happen in this chat right now. I want to see the Salty Army showing up. All right. I want to see the salty army showing up in this chat right now. Okay. Salt army with the rees and all of that. All right. Because uh, salty army is legion. We know that. <clears throat> salty needs to come on the show. Yeah. I had him on a while back um, and I would love to get him on again. We can make that happen. I try not to do a ton of guests on this show. Occasionally we'll have people pop on, um, you know, but Generally speaking, I, I don't. It's it's not a guest heavy show. It could evolve into that at some point. It's just not something that I I personally want to. Uh, I don't want it to be all about guests. PJ says, "Hey Jeremy, I sent you a DM on Twitter. When you get a second, can you check it out?" Absolutely, I can. Uh, thank you, and looking forward to seeing you in Vegas. Look at all the salt in the chat. That's what's up. Uh, Greedo Game says, "We want Jay." Fantastic Mr. Knox says, hail and scanning in 199. Here's 40 Aussie buckaroos. 40 Aussie buckaroos. Uh, turning 40 in a few weeks, drop bears for Trump. Let's go. Well, uh, happy early birthday, man. Happy to hear that. Um, Eternal Angel member message says, what's up, Jeremy? What's up? Uh, Great Tank says, everyone should watch... Oh, I got that one earlier, that member message. Vault95 Survivor says, here's uh, for the Superior IRL cast show. Scanning in with the code 199. By the way, uh, does Trump have a G.I. Joe action figure? Uh, does Trump like G.I. Joe? The Trump magic ball probably knows. Let's ask it. I don't have it here because it was. I have it packed up. All of my stuff that I brought from Orlando. So I don't know exactly where that's at at the moment. But I can look into that. It's a good question. Um, let's see. Matt... HTX, I appreciate that you waited to weigh in on the Steven Crowder issue. I know you're not a fan, so thanks for doing your due diligence. Hail, CobraCast199. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, I'm always just going to give... I have... Obviously, I'm a human being. Uh, I'm a flawed human being like anybody else. 
I have my own personal biases. I have my own preconceived notions. Um, I don't like Steven Crowder. Not on a personal level. I don't know Steven Crowder. I've never had a conversation with him. He probably has no idea who I am. I, I'm saying like from a internet standpoint, from a show standpoint, I've never found Steven Crowder to be entertaining or I've never found that I could learn a whole lot from him. Um, I just, I don't care for him. Um, especially when he rides the fence on shit like DeSantis and Trump when it was obvious who the answer was. Um, but that's neither here nor there. This situation, um, I, I never felt comfortable like pouncing on Steven Crowder for the leaked um, video of him with his wife having a fight. I felt like, I did kind of take a shot at him to say, like, well, you, you know, leaked phone call with your friend Jeremy Boring, and now they're leaking this. I find the hypocrisy in that. That's pretty interesting. It's a lot of karma. But um, I don't think, like, demeaning somebody because a specific moment of some private footage was leaked intentionally with the intent to make someone look bad, I don't think that's right. Um, and I am, I, I'm just like anyone else in life, like, I know if that happened to me, then it would make me look bad, like it would make you look bad. Like if you're taking somebody's worst moments and snipping them out and putting it on the Internet for the Internet to then just crush them, that's bullshit. And I feel like that's what happened with him in that situation. And now with uh, the more personal stuff, it just seems like uh, specifically on the Jared Crowder thing, I'm not saying I side with Steven Crowder. I'm saying I do not side with Jared getting involved in a man's marriage. It's kind of fucked up. It's kind of fucked up. Um, SBC says, Jeremy, since Melanie admitted she's anti-LG, uh, LGHDTV+, plus, uh, this means she's your enemy. I want to play that clip again. So if you didn't see it, Melanie Mack went on uh, the Low podcast, the Low Cow podcast, um, and just, it's so funny. And I just think it's a, this is how people need to respond. When you are accused of being something, don't explain it. Don't act like it bothers you. Just fucking own it. And that's what she did. It's absolutely fantastic. This is a work of art right here. I want to see the receipt for that. Uh, me defending somebody, because I'm sure they were saying more than just looks. I'm sure they were calling her homophobic. I'm sure they were saying that she's a bigot. I'm sure they're saying all this other fucked up shit. Uh, bear, so bear, I was defending bear, that. How is that, how is that incorrect? You now, 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 what, what, what got missed here, too, is that Rich down here in the bottom left-hand corner, who hates Melanie Mack, she said they'd be correct. He thinks she said that would be incorrect but that's not what she said she said they'd be correct and he goes how is that correct how is that incorrect so he's already because he's looking to be fake offended by something she's already said it was they'd be correct and he thought she said incorrect i'm sure they're saying that she's a bigot I'm sure they're saying all this other fucked up shit. Uh, so bear, I was defending that. How, is that, how is that incorrect? You were mock mocking a trans woman incessantly and laughing in her face. I watched the clip. Yeah, where, that's where, true. Where, I did. Okay, so <laughs> that how are you not anti-LGBTQ when you do something like I, that? I am anti-LGBTQ. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, good. Okay, Rich, so what now? <laughs> <laughs> See, he was just like, he's, he was looking for her to explain. Well, I'm not because I, I, I it's so funny, dude. It's so funny. <laughs> Hail Melanie Mack. That was such a good moment. It was so funny. Again, your labels, your words, your accusations mean shit. It doesn't mean any fucking thing. Call me racist. Call me sexist. Call me homophobic. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It only matters if I let it bother me. And it doesn't bother me. Bring it on. Nobody cares about this shit, dude. This identity politics stuff is nonsense. Everybody's sick of it. Everybody. So, um, but yeah, that, I, I'll never, never not find that to be hilarious. Uh, what, what she did right there it was so good. It was fantastic. Um, all right. So let me see. Oh my God. So wait, so this dude, 
Uh, I guess I asked Rich from Review Text now uh, making a video about Melanie, uh, what she said. God, man. People that get fake offended over stuff is it's it's a strange thing, man. I'll never I'll never understand how another man um, gets offended because a, another person has an opinion. Like I don't, I, I've said this many times. I don't care about people's personal opinions. Um, I even said it today with the whole the black girl gamers bullshit. Am I upset that there's a group called Black Girl Gamers? No. Am I upset that black girl gamers only want black girl gamers in their group? No. Am I upset that if someone did white guy gamers, would the black girl gamers call that racism? That's what bothers me. It's the hypocrisy of the situation that bothers me. I am all for people doing and saying whatever the fuck they want and letting the chips fall where they may. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. But, you know, these, these clowns, black girl gamers, it's just ridiculous how, how they are. And then, um, you know, I know some of you have been following the, the, the drama with, you know, the Gamergate stuff and all of that. Um, but, you know, so for those of you that kind of have been watching my Geeks and Gamers stuff, Gothics, who's, you know, friends with Geeks and Gamers. We've had her on several streams. She says, as a former Black Girl Gamers member, I can confidently say that these people are full of crap. They do not care about diversity. They promptly kicked me out for being anti-Black, a.k.a. not making an idol out of my skin color and refusing to hate white people. This is, this is, this is where we are right now. This is the level of identity politics that we are at. It's absolutely psychopathic it really is and the right wing is kind of falling into that trap in a lot of ways too with uh everything going on with israel and, and all this other stuff and it's a it's a cancer it's a cancer that will eat things up and again i will go back to my original point that the thing that we as if you are a non-leftist the thing we should be focused in on is president donald trump and this right here is pretty glorious to watch. The head of expected payment on his $175 million bond. This sounds like a pump and dump. I wouldn't mean, you, if you were still New York AG, wouldn't you be prosecuting somebody for this? If you go and buy the stock, let's say from him, you're actually buying from right. him, and it goes down, you actually, you, if you sell it, you will have a tax loss. I think that the value is essentially worthless. If they went to market and tried to sell three... This is all of these clowns coping over the fact that President Trump and True Social, basically President Trump got about three to four billion dollars uh, added to his net worth over True Social going public. And this was all during the whole process of Letitia James trying to find him four hundred and fifty four uh, million dollars. And then that got reduced down to like a hundred million or something like that. They are losing it. Because, again, I'll repeat what I've said a million times. The most powerful people in the world are targeting President Trump. They're targeting his family. They're targeting his business. They're targeting his past. They're targeting his present. They're targeting his future. They're doing everything. And they can't stop him. And it drives them crazy. Three billion dollars, the value of the stock would go to zero practically immediately. Trump's co-author behind his best-selling book, Art of the Deal, claiming the former president may take foreign funds to pay his legal bills. He is more than willing to do anything right now. I mean, look at his range of remarks over the last month or two. He is now a gangster. You know, he's a mafia <laughs> don. He belongs in a prison. Jesse, the liberal litigators made <laughs> President Trump much more wealthy. It's like an own goal. It's karma, Jessica. Yep. <laughs> and it's I so funny, the Democrats that. have been bragging about Biden's stock market. And now they're like, oh, it's a ploy. The whole stock market's a ploy. <laughs> and Joy Reid wants to investigate Trump, but not Nancy Pelosi. Talk about a pump and dump. Nancy and Pauly P have been pumping and dumping their whole lives. <sighs> Pillow talk. All of a sudden, he happens to know exactly when and where to sell and what to buy. Yep. It just happens to be his wife's the Speaker of the House. 
Come on, Jessica. The whole market is a pump and dump. Eventually, <laughs> stock market's going to correct, and everybody on the inside is going to sell, and everybody else is going to be sitting here like, what just happened? <laughs> this is the way life is. What do you think the Clinton Foundation was? Clinton Foundation was a thousand was times A1. worse than Truth Social going public. It's listed on a stock exchange. It's got transparency. Instead, the Clinton Foundation just goes to the Saudis while she's Secretary yeah. of State and says, pay up. They give her $20 million and they use it on their daughter's wedding. 25. Come on, Jessica. The At whole least thing she didn't is a take scam. Two billion like Jared Kushner. The whole thing is a scam. The Jesse Waters is easily, easily the best personality at Fox and it's not even close. Like he is easily the best personality. Clintons don't even know what business is. They just know how to fleece it. Mouse Potato said I liked him in Friends. <laughs> He does look like Ross, doesn't he? He looks just like Ross. <laughs> Jessica, have you scored on yourselves? I don't think so. I, just also, Charity Navigator has a very high rating for the Clinton Foundation. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, listen, I have always said this: Donald Trump gets really lucky. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Of course. Oh, it's the genius of True Social that has under five hundred thousand users le through the last nine months of twenty twenty three. What have you built, Jessica? Yeah. Here we go. I mean, Are you guys kidding me? How many? No, I mean, I'm always interested. That, I love it well, when people have, who have a media footprint pretend to know how things are built. I don't know oh, no. how things are made. No, but I know, I don't know that. know anything about. How I know things that are made. when something is doing well he's that people want to be yeah. on it Look at all these and when they lucky <laughs> no, he's I, lucky no, he was a billionaire <laughs> before this stock yeah, he was he uh, he had two he billion just and now invested he has it in a savings account. Okay. Yeah, and the, anyway, and you know I, what? And the oh, government oh, tried to take oh, his money. Oh, 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 they oh, 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 they oh, want oh, his oh, money. Oh, and now they're furious because he's making money on his own. And you know what? No, it's poetic justice. Good yeah, for him. It's great poetry. So <laughs> in the last nine months of 2023, Truth Social generated $3.4 million and it lost $49 million in that span. The valuation, which is $11 billion, Compared to Reddit, right? Something that we've all been on, right? Something that people use. I, know, every I don't. Okay, you're on Truth Social, but not on Reddit. Anyway, their valuation was six point four billion dollars. So you think that a site that has less than okay. half a million users? I mean, you this know, is what you know these what are facts. Electric pathetic. car company. It's pathetic. I, I, this is pathetic. <laughs> the man. Look, you're Reddit into this born, conversation. It's born because it's other companies that just had ideas. All these valuations are ridiculous. Jessica. Okay, then he's the game. Uh, it's like GameStop, okay. right? You it's know a, what? No. You know no, how you look at not, this? You I'm look at this. Oh, you're on Truth Social. I'm on Truth Show Social. Show it to me. I'm not having you look at my phone. Show me your phone. How, how <laughs> dare you? You Show fed. me. You're a fan. Wow, Greg, I have lost total control. Do you want to comment? No, but I, I you know, no offense, Jessica, but the critics who go oh, after. Oh, the offense has already been taken. Okay. <laughs> the, the critics yeah. who go after whether it is Trump. Oh, the value of Truth Social is one person. It's Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the most prominent human being on the planet. Maybe Elon Musk is right there too. That's it. It's in terms of sheer prominence and notoriety and influence, it's Donald Trump and it's Elon Musk. Those are the two most powerful personalities. Donald Trump is exclusively using True Social. To put it in perspective, someone like XQC, a, a streamer who literally just streams and just sits around and talks, he got like a hundred million dollar contract from Kick. A hundred million dollar contract. Some XQC is 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 a is a insect compared to Donald Trump in terms of prominence. So Donald Trump, this is why, and again. This is why Trump is Trump. I've, I've been yelling at Trump to get on Twitter. And I've been saying, like, whatever, true social, all of that. It's more important to get on Twitter so you can get your voice out there because you need to have more people hearing from you. Guess what? When he needed it most and they took it public, him being exclusively on true social made the whole entire, um, you know, net worth of it go massive because exclusively it's there. So, again, man, that's that's why True Social is so valuable. It's because Trump.
Trump or Elon Musk or any any capitalist or anybody who builds things. Yeah, it's just confu it, It's funny to me because just because you're in the media or you somebody once called you an expert or you showed up four times on CNBC to talk about stocks, somehow you know what somebody's doing. I want to know if this is a scam. Tell me who's being ripped off. Who's involuntarily investing in this? Tell me about the illegality of it, all right? It's funny coming from people who push things like Air America or BLM or DEI, who support the climate agreements or the UN or the actual election of Biden. You want a scam? This guy pawned himself up off as a moderate unifier. Not a chance. Talk about pump and dump. That's <laughs> Biden's life. He's yeah, one right. big pump and uh, dump. And this, <laughs> is gonna, this is going to play out. As a movie, right? We're in the third act. It feels like the remake of Roadhouse, but even better. Because you have all these elites in power joining in to throw out the outsider who has somehow slowed their progress to domination, and they can't handle it. All right, Judge. Yep. All right, this whole thing is born of the hatred and the contempt of the left. Okay? The progressive lefts. The man was literally thrown off of Twitter. He was forced to start his own social net worth, he, uh, network, and he did. And you know what? The Dems deserve it. The sad part about this whole thing is that the Democrats have literally made him richer. They've made him more powerful. And the Democrats, through their hatred, are going to make him president of the United States. They are incapable of looking at themselves in the mirror and say, I hate this man. I unfriended all my friends and family in 2016 when he was elected. Because who did, who did Donald Trump kill? I mean, what is the problem? The man has signed the front of checks for his whole career, and now all of a sudden, what did he build? What didn't he build? Can I, what I, hasn't he done? I, I do want to add one other thing to that, which is... He's done everything. He's done it all. He's been a real estate developer. He's changed the entire landscape of New York. He's been a reality TV star. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame. He's done it all. And now he's the president of the United States of America, or former president, and he's going to be the future president of the United States of America. He's accomplished the greatest political run we have ever seen. Nothing will ever come close to that. He's, he's mastered everything. And um, they still just think it's all luck. So he gets kicked off these other social medias. He creates his own. And then what happens is the media is so... Uh, addicted to covering him <laughs> that what they do is they take his true social posts they're not necessarily on true social but they take those and they put them on television or in the newspaper giving him earned media yep. so the head that's of right 100 percent right like he trump is the man there you can hate him you can love him it doesn't matter he's the guy he's the guy and he turns the needle like no one else that is just the truth of the situation and uh it, it, it they hate him for it they despise him for it <laughs> it's so funny uh metal demon for 50 says did you see did you happen to see the plane that ran off the runway and tilted sideways it happened on march 8th in texas it was united airlines flight still under investigation thoughts i don't recall seeing that um i don't I, I hear a, a lot about these plane uh, situations, and again, this is what I to, I understand statistically speaking that flying is the safest way to travel. I understand that, so I want to qualify by I'm not an idiot. I do understand that flying is statistically safer, but statistically speaking, the safest way for me to travel is for my hands to be on the wheel. <laughs> And uh, that's how I will continue to approach it. So specifically, no, I don't remember that particular um, situation. Some, a few people are asking, when was this? So March 8th, um, there was a plane that ran off the runway and tilted sideways. It happened on March 8th in Texas. It was United Airlines, still under investigation. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see that. Um, uh, Gung Ho Max says, not an idiot. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I can look into that, though, but I, I don't recall seeing that one specifically. I saw, like, there was a bunch of stuff with, like, wheels, landing gear falling out of the sky and panels falling out of the sky. I saw a lot of those. Um, am I a pilot? 
No. Why, Nathan? Why? My, my When I say my hands on the wheel, I mean me driving. That's what I mean with my hands on the wheel. Hayden Wayne for 50. Says, uh, speaking on identity politics, I've been talking with my girlfriend's teen daughter about some of this stuff. People in her school do the gender stuff and she shuts it down with a no. Her dad disagrees and tries to preach ideology. I'm winning. Yeah, it's tough, man, um, with today's society. And um, it, it's it's all around for teenagers and kids. Um, you can't get away from it. And it's almost like you make a kid weird if you shield them from it too much because they're they're going to feel like an, an outcast if they don't kind of have any uh, if they don't have any kind of knowledge of it. So it's it's crazy from like social media and even like the surrounding uh, circumstances of uh, little friend groups and things like that. And it just shows you that the infestation of Hollywood and the mainstream media, it's, it's definitely having an impact. It certainly is having an impact on the younger generation and is very, very scary. Um, and, uh, that's why it really comes down to good parenting, bad parenting. And, um, that's, that's the only answer to it. Hayden Wayne for part two says, since she started speaking out, there are only two genders. Uh, more and more kids in her class are starting to speak up and agreeing with her. The number is growing. I'm teaching her truth in education, too, not letting the brainwashing happen. And that right there is perfectly said because, it, it, like, there's no there's no substitute for good parenting. There's just it that like that. To me, that's that's the bottom line. And it, it it's. It's, there's no guarantee on anything, but if you're looking for the best method, move. it's good parenting. Good parenting is the answer in these situations. It's the, so when people go, well, should we allow this? It's, it all comes back to the parents. Um, there, there's bad examples everywhere in life that are going to lead people to certain things or whatever. That, that It doesn't matter if it's, if it's the I identity politics stuff or if it's Stuff that when I was growing up, stuff that I was seeing or stuff that people that were older than me were seeing. When there's always things that are distractions and things like that that are going to you know, take people off their path. Um, and so uh, I'm happy to hear that, Hayden. That's awesome, brother. And uh, we're not going to see you in Vegas this time. I hate to hear it. I hate that you're not going to be in Vegas, man. But we, uh, we look forward to the next time I see you. And Hayden Wayne again for 20 says, I think Crowder does great with his reporting. I find his personality kind of grating. Um, but I feel for the guy. Jared saying he wants Crowder to not see his kids is ultimate shit tier. Um, if you're not showing any reason why. Yeah, it really, I mean, that's just to, takes it to a whole different level, man. Um, and uh, it's just not, like unless they're, uh, again, I remember years ago, um, I called out uh, our boy John Campia. Uh, this video is somewhere on Geeks and Gamers. I've looked for it, and I can't find it because I've got so many fucking videos on that channel. But I remember, like, John Campia was making a video, and he was basically talking about how, how much harder it is for women in Hollywood, and, and they're being held back, and all this other bullshit. And he said... There are people in Hollywood that are fiercely racist and fiercely sexist, and they will do anything to hold back women and minorities. There are people in Hollywood that will absolutely dedicate it to holding women and minorities back. And I made a video, and I'm like, who? Who? John? Who are these racist and sexist? And the fact is, there's two scenarios to this. There is either you're making it up, which is not good, or number two, you know who they are and you refuse to call them out because you're a coward, which isn't good. Neither one of those scenarios is a positive. So either you're lying or you're making it up, or you're lying or you refuse to call them out because you're a coward. Which is it? You fucking said it. You fucking said there are fierce, there are people in Hollywood that are fiercely, fiercely against women and minorities being elevated. Okay, who? You know who they are, fucking name them. Oh, you don't want to name them, do you? Because you're a coward. And that's the whole point. Now, back to Not Gay Jared, or Jared Monroe, or whatever his fucking name is. If your stance is that Steven Crowder is a danger to his kids, 
which is what he's implying. And but you can't, you can't discuss it because of an NDA. That doesn't add up. That doesn't add up. Like, if it's that bad, you can absolutely make it be known. But the fact is, is you say you need your NDA released to state it. That, that, that there's two plus two does not equal four. Okay? Two plus two does not equal four. A uh, horror amarada for 10. It says, hey, Jeremy, just need a little help from your epic grifting skills. I've started a video channel called The Abysmal Critic. Just my thoughts on gaming, entertainment, and culture. Thanks. If you guys are interested in horror amarada, having a new channel called The Abysmal Critic, which I appreciate that name, talking about gaming, entertainment, and culture. Check it out. Thank you, Horror Amarad. I'm happy to hear that. Um, Kelly R. Jessica, the uh, creator of Vocal Fry Cringe. Uh, what up, Kelly R. in the house? Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. MAGA to Kelly R. Cramerica Industries says, uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Jeremy, any thoughts on Otani? I haven't looked that far into it. I know when Sports Wars have been talking about the whole Otani situation. I don't know the details because I've been so wrapped up in the gaming side of things and the um, the political side of things. Uh, so I don't know the specifics on it. But I will say, uh, and as a matter of fact, I answer that this way because um, I, I think I'm supposed to be on open bar tomorrow with a critical drinker. Um, and so... Critical Drinker hit me up. And he's like, hey, you want to come to Open Bar? I'm like, I probably can come on. I was like, but I haven't watched a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks because <clears throat> I've been so um, I've been so focused on gaming and the political stuff. So he says, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. So Open Bar tomorrow on Critical Drinker's channel. Uh, I'll be over there. I expect to see the 199 in the chat showing up and showing out. That's what's up. Looking forward to seeing you guys over there. It's going to be awesome. Dante Rage says, Don Lemon uh, looks like life gave him <laughs> lemon AIDS. Oof. Oof. Whiskey Niner, thank you for becoming a new member. Appreciate that. Kate Grant says, ratio uh, of the Star Wars Acolyte, where is Ryan? Oh, my gosh. It's probably up to 600,000 dis dislikes now. And counting. Flag Ninja says the day Don Lemon interviewed Elon was the greatest day of Don's life for Elon. It was a Tuesday, hundred um, percent. Let's see. Cade says shout out to R.I. Germ. Um, I've been with you since 2018. Thank you. I can't believe. I can't believe uh, that uh, you guys, some of you have been following me since like 2018. That is just wild. Uh, Eric K says, your camera shows off because it likes all of us better than you. You do not have to look at you. We do. That's a fair point, actually. It's a fair point. Dixie Normus stopped by to say hi. The Godfather says, it's time once again to come aboard the ho train. Um, the exalted patriarch says DEI didn't earn it. That's very good. Blabs of Tower Tart says I was going um, to bring Haitian barbecue to the next meetup, but now Jay isn't coming, so I can't. I like pickles. Yay. I'm still going to try to convince Jay to come with me to Vegas. You think we can convince him? I think I can, I think I can bully him into it. John Kennedy says, do you think uh, the diddler fled the States or got intercepted by the feds in Miami? I suspect he got intercepted on the DL by the feds. Hail 199-63215. Um, I, I, I think that, I think that he's probably not captured uh, talking about P Diddy. Um, I think P Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever you want to fucking call him, um, is a garbage human being. And I think that he um, probably had something to do with Tupac's uh, killing, murder, whatever. Uh, I also think Shook Knight was involved. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, there's a lot to that. But um, P. Diddy, I'm glad he's, because P. Diddy, all those years ago, you know, he, he did have the stuff to say about Donald Trump. And I never forgot that. I never forgot that. You know, when he said that stuff about Donald Trump. And those that preach the loudest have the most to hide. It happens every single time. You know, but P. Diddy actually said this right here about Donald Trump. Um, white men like Trump need to be banished. That is straight 
from P. Diddy. White men like Trump need to be banished. And um, I just, I love when these clowns, uh, the ones that are trying to get Trump taken down, actually get crushed by the reality. And, uh, you know, go to hell, Puff Daddy. Go to hell. Actually, I, and I did like some of his music back in the, back in the day. Um, I'm trying to get the chat pulled back up. Why is uh, the chat just giving me all kind of problems right now? I can't understand why that keeps... Come on. Well, we'll give it a minute. We'll leave it there. Um, but yes, uh, in terms of um, you know Puff Daddy, um, I think that he's just going to be like the first of many because you've got Jay-Z that 50 Cent... Okay, I got to find that clip. I'm going to play it too. That thing that 50 Cent pulled up, I'm going to play it. I don't know if you guys saw this, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm playing it and I don't care. I'm playing it and I don't care. Um, where's 50 at? Where's 50 cents Twitter account? Here we go. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Here we go. I don't know how many of you saw this, but uh, I'm not going to confirm or deny if it's real, uh, but this was tweeted out by 50 cents. So you can't cancel me for it. Here we go. Buffy, you stupid ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab them in the pussy. Don't kidnap the pussy. They raided your shit. I see. I got a courtesy call when they raided my house. You really fucked up up my nigga. Can I get a copy of the Meek Mill sex tape? Please, nigga. Puffy, puffy, puffy. You stupid ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab... <laughs> Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, it's so good. 50 tweeted that out. Like 50, like right here it is. The world's almost over, so what are we worried about? Whoever made this is fucked up. I think Trump's going to be president again, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, waiting for my chat to reappear. Uh, yeah, but 50 Cent, I don't know, man. I don't know what to think about 50. I don't know if he's somebody that should be... Tr like, I like 50's music, um, but do, we, do, do I trust 50 Cent? No. I remember a few years ago, 50 Cent basically came out and said, like, how he supports Trump. And then I guess Chelsea Handler got really mad about that. And said something about it, and then 50 Cent backed off. So I, I really don't know um, if uh, if that's the case or not. So we'll see. We'll see if he's willing to stand by it. I do have some update, okay? Now, as you guys know, um, a lot of the haters, they, they love to, and again, this is why the people, this is why the peeps are the most important part of the show. A lot of times... People say, oh, Geeks and Gamers, dead channel. Geeks and Gamers, dead channel. Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, let's look at yesterday's Super Chat numbers for the United States of America. Oh, wow, look -a there. Geeks and Gamers, number two in the United States of America, right behind the two-time... Dr. Disrespect. So Geeks and Gamers, number two in the United States of America. All right, there we go. That's what's up. Hail to the chat. You guys make that happen right there. Look at that. We were like a, we were like a, somebody would have sent one more $100 super chat, we would have beat Dr. Disrespect. That's the power of the audience right there. Okay, that's the power of the audience. So hell yeah. Yeah, Papa Gundam's right there. Uh, we got Tim Cast right there, so there you go. Uh, I should tweet. I'm gonna tweet this screenshot out. I'm gonna screen. I'm gonna screenshot it, and I'm gonna put dead channel, dead channel G and G. Uh, since all the people that hate me, they're always like, "Oh, your channel's dead. Your channel's dead." I'm like, "All right, dead channel." Let's see there. Uh, okay. Um, right there. There we go. I'm going to put hashtag dead channel. There we go. Dead channel. Boom. There we go. Tweet it out. 
dead channel. Jeremy, number two, Fig. I know. Hey, but but we did have Rumble. So if you add Rumble to it, we we actually we actually uh, beat Doc. So, but uh, either way, it's just an honor to even be in involved in in like that. I mean, Doctor Disrespect gets like a fucking shit ton of people watching him. It's absolutely crazy, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's wild. So, an honor, an absolute honor. Thank you guys for allowing me to do this. Um, D. Watts is just 100 more. Damn, I should have donated more. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, let's see. Jeremy can read all of his Super Chats, but Tim won't. That is true, but to be fair, and listen, I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to, like, always, like, hate on Tim or whatever. At the end of the day, if I'm going to criticize, like, the Daily Wire and Steven Crowder and all the infighting over there, um, I not, like, I think Tim Pool is... The most important thing for the remainder of this year is to get Donald Trump back in office. That's all I care about. And Tim Pool is a huge piece of that puzzle. His show is a huge piece of that puzzle. Whatever disagreements I have with him, and again, let's just be clear, it's a one-sided situation. Don't even know if Tim knows who I am. He probably doesn't. Um, but it doesn't matter. What matters is Trump getting back in office. That's all I care about. I want Tim Pool to keep kicking ass. I want him to keep pulling huge numbers. Um, and I want him to run his show to the best of his ability and continue to talk about what needs to be talked about in order for President Trump to get back in the White House. That's all I fucking care about. Um, and so hopefully that happens. And uh, that's that's the eyes on the prize, man. That's all I care about. Uh, what Jer what's Jeremy thoughts on the bridge collapse in Baltimore? There was no Cobra cast yesterday. Yeah, I've talked about it a little bit. I essentially said that... Um, I don't think that there was any anything to be like it was a freak accident in my opinion. I just think it was a freak accident. I don't think there was anything you know crazy going on there. The only thing that bothered me was how quickly the FBI came out and said that they've done a full investigation and there was no uh, terrorism, no things to be concerned about. That's when I was like, okay, hold on a minute because I don't trust the FBI at all. Um, so when I saw that, that's what made me concerned because, if you look at the actual video of the bridge and, and the traffic, like, I don't think there was any traffic at the moment of the collapse. I don't think there was any traffic going over the bridge. There was obviously construction workers and there was, you know, cr crew that were on the bridge, but I don't think there were any vehicles that were crossing the bridge at the time of impact and the time of the collapse. Um, now, um, so if there was something going on, that would have happened at five o'clock in the afternoon. If there was like some some thing going on uh, inside job or whatever, it would have happened at like five o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm gonna be honest with you. So when I first saw that bridge fall, it kind of freaked me out like really badly. And I remember the first thing I saw. I have Ryan Kennel's uh, notifications on tweet notifications on because he doesn't tweet a lot. And so when he does tweet, it's usually something to pay attention to. And so Ryan, I got the tweet notification from Ryan, and all he said was, this is terrifying. I thought it was like another race-swapped character in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe when I saw Ryan say, this is terrifying. Um, and because, again, I just got the tweet notification where it says, this is terrifying. And in my mind, I was like, oh, another race-swapped character Ryan's reacting to. And uh, so I, I clicked on the tweet, and I saw that, like, this bridge fell. I'm like, oh my God. And for me, like I am, I, I, when I, when my own mortality, when I have to face my own mortality, it freaks me out. It freaks me out big time. And uh, I see you, Kelly R, you mad lady. I'll get you in just a minute. A proper 199. Um, so, Things that do impact me are when Kobe Bryant, when Kobe Bryant uh, died tragically in that helicopter accident. Obviously, it was a helicopter accident, and obviously, I can't like put myself in that situation. What freaked me out, and I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan. Kobe Bryant is my favorite basketball player of all time. I love Kobe Bryant. And so there was two things that hit me from that level. Number one, it was Kobe Bryant at that point in his life kind of seemed invincible, but the thing that really bothered me about the Kobe Bryant situation is that Kobe Bryant 
was in a situation where he as a father could not protect his daughter and they both died. That is awful. That hits me on a different level and it bothers me. And I, I still haven't gotten over Kobe Bryant's death uh, from that for that reason. Outside of the fact that I'm a huge fan of him as a basketball player, it's the fact that he was in a situation with his daughter and he, this all-time great athlete, this legendary figure, could not prevent his own daughter dying with him. And that, that freaks me out. That freaks me out. So that was like a, you know, hit me on different levels. So my point being is that when I saw the bridge fall, I looked at that and I was just thinking this bridge just fell for no reason outside of obviously my first thought was when I saw the bridge fall, I was thinking about lack of maintenance, uh, budgets, you know, us sending money to Ukraine and not putting money into our own infrastructure, shit like that. And then I saw that the ship had hit it, and I was like, okay, that at least changes the dynamic a little bit. It doesn't make it better, but at least it gives me a little more context to at least I understand that it looks like a freak accident. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's kind of how the whole thing uh, it hit with me. And then again, I watched it uh, multiple times, and I just like the timing, the time of day, the amount that there was no traffic. The power going out, I, I felt very comfortable that there was it was just a freak accident. And that's what it looks like to be. But again, the worst thing was was that the FBI comes out immediately and was like, hey, um, you know, everything's good. Nothing to see here, guys. Everything's great. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm a little concerned if the FBI is trying to tell us not to be concerned. Uh, now I'm starting to get concerned. Kelly R. For a proper... 199. Holy crap. P. Diddy bringing his boys into his degenerate lifestyle is unforgivable. Who does that? What Trump said. Ditto. 1000%. Um, Kelly, 1000%. Again, if you know anything, like, so P. Diddy is somebody that I, um, after. Uh, so Tupac was shot in 94 in New York. He survived that. Um, that was the famous, like, he went out, he jumped out of uh, the hospital bed and walked right into the courts uh, where he was being accused of something and uh, got sentenced. And uh, But he blamed Puffy and, uh, or P. Diddy, whatever his fucking name is. He blamed P. Diddy and Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G., for that. And that's where the song Hit Em Up came from. Um, Hit Em Up, one of the great rap disses of all time. And then in 96 is when Tupac got shot again in Vegas, and that's when he died. And then I want to say like less than a year later. I feel like it was like six months later. And you guys can fact check me on this. Somebody told me it was a year later. I don't think it was. So Tupac was shot in September of 96. I want to say... Notorious Big was shot in March of the next year, if I'm not mistaken. And after that, Puff Daddy, at the time his name was Puff Daddy, or Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs, and it was Puff Daddy, and then he went to P. Diddy, and then Diddy, because he's a fucking retard and he can't make up his mind. Um, Puff Daddy became a pretty big star because he did a song called I'll Be Missing You that was dedicated to... Uh, Notorious B.I.G., his friend that he, again, he kind of started grifting well before people like me. Um, Puff Daddy essentially did uh, a live stream after his friend died and got a ton of super chats. That's what I'll be missing you was. That was the equivalent of a live stream getting super chats. And uh, he blew up after I'll be missing you. He blew up. And that was a huge song. And I became a fan of him. And then he came out with Puff Daddy and the family. And that was a pretty good album. He had the... Um, mo money, mo problems, all of that. And, um, and then he kind of, you know, whatever became this big music mogul. And I think after that is, uh, he kind of started laying a little bit lower. He was still a prominent figure, but then he started getting intertwined with people like Justin Bieber, who was under age at the time. And there was some other stuff going on. And now with all of this going on with Puff Daddy, P Diddy, whatever his name is, now you've got questions about where's Jay-Z. 
And all, all I know about, I, I'm not like the biggest fan of Jay Z, and I, I, I say with all disrespect in the world, I think Beyonce is the most overrated piece of shit I have ever seen in my life. I think she's a talentless hack, and I think that she's trash. And I think that if you put a piece of dog shit in front of a microphone, it will be more entertaining than Beyonce. So I just want to make sure I'm saying that with all disrespect intended, um, that I think she's a horrible person. And um, so it will be interesting to see if we start to get a little more insight into the Jay-Z, Beyonce uh, side of things, if there's any involvement there. Because 50 Cent seems to think that Jay-Z was involved. Now, as I said... As a uh, old school rap fan myself, um, Tupac, who Suge Knight even said this in an interview after Tupac died, but he said Tupac used to put stuff in his songs to take mild shots at people, calling them out. And he did call out Jay Z and Dre in what's the song on his Machiavelli album? Machiavelli was the album that came out right after he died. Um, uh, it wasn't, I can't remember the name of the song, but he called out Jay-Z and Dre, and he called them both gay. And Suge Knight alluded to the fact that Tupac was basically putting them on blast before anybody else knew it. And uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens. You know what I mean? So, there's your, your backstory on that. But uh, I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, David Rodriguez says PBD podcast tomorrow with Alina Haba. There we go. Haba's in the chat. Haba's in the chat. Was it to live and die in LA? Is that it? Forsaken? I thought it was, uh, to live and die in LA. I know that song very well. There was a music video for that, but there was another one. Was it bomb first? I thought it was bomb first where he called them out. I can't remember. That was on the Machiavelli album, but, uh, to live and die in LA is a great song by the way. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge Tupac fan. Someone said Haba. <laughs> Get the chat going crazy. Someone chat's going crazy. Chat's very happy. Uh, Kelly R with a 50 says, Hail to the chat. Look at you. Kelly. Thank you. Kelly R. Hail Kelly R. Hail Kelly R. I <laughs> see Liberty Prime. Liberty Prime says 1992 space movie. <sighs> whatever you do and chat, I know you're, listen, I know you're not going to do this and, and I'll trust you. Okay. Let's keep this between us. Okay. Don't Google 1992 space movie. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. I would never want anyone here to Google 1992 space movie. I would never, <laughs> I'm going to Google it now. I haven't Googled it in a while. 1992 space movie. I don't, I don't want anyone to Google 1992 space movie. <laughs> uh, somebody said, I'm Googling Haba. All right, that's a good answer, too. <laughs> and I appreciate that. You know, that's the power of being the cult leader that I am. I know that if I tell you, chat, to not Google 1992 Space Movie, you won't do it. That's the kind of trust we have here, okay? That's the kind of trust we have. <laughs> Holy shit. DM says, I think Crowder is an asset uh, challenging libs. Yum. Yeah, it, look, uh, do I think Crowder's a net positive? 1,000%. And that's kind of my whole thing here. That's why I don't. We are now closing. We're almost at the end of March, all right? I don't want any negativity from anybody that's going to support President Trump from me. I don't, I don't, I don't want to have any negativity towards anybody. So if you're supporting President Trump, we're good. That goes for Tim Pool. That goes for Steven Crowder. That goes for the Daily Wire. Like, I don't care. I don't want to beef with, I don't, I don't want to, I just want people to focus on President Trump and getting him back in office. That's the only thing that matters. Anything else is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if there's disagreements. It doesn't matter if there's issues. Put that shit aside because President Trump getting back in office is the only fucking thing that matters right now. It really is. That's it. 
That's it. So I'll say hail Louder with Crowder, hail Daily Wire, hail Tim Cast IRL, and hail anybody else out there that's supporting President Trump because that's all that fucking matters. That's it. Um, KVG says, uh, who is the we Jared referred, referred to when he threatened to sue the quartering? Uh, do, I didn't, did he threaten here? Let me, mm, let's see if I can find, didn't I title, didn't I Google him earlier? Okay, Jared Monroe. Um, so here's his tweet right here. Um, Issue one more tweet or statement endorsing an opinion that I somehow sexually involved or want to be involved with Hillary Crowder, and we will have uh, a new lawsuit. That sounds like a royal we to me, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds like a royal we. Um, I, I can see how that's a royal we. You know, I don't, I don't know if there's anything deeper than that. Again, maybe, maybe not. Um, but... What did Quartering say? What, what's the bit? What's the issue Jared here? Jared Monroe willingly signed these documents, willingly, uh, and then willingly violated them multiple times by inserting himself weirdly into the Stephen Crowder divorce. That's what all this is about. Unless Jared Monroe releases some level of additional evidence here, um, I think. Ultimately, end of the day, Stephen Crowder is going to be rich and stay rich. Stephen Crowder's ex-wife is going to be rich. And Jared Monroe is going to be flapping in the wind because I have no idea why he inserted himself into this. Here's a message back sent in 2022. They understand right-wing media. They are familiar with who Stephen is and that world and things that would destabilize him. They're trying to make him have a mental breakdown. But by employing a media slash Brian Freeman and PR strategy that will significantly threaten this public persona and brand. By the way, Brian Friedman is the guy that defended. Here's what. I, all right. So I don't know. I don't want to list it all up there. I mean, obviously, quartering. I'll say this about the quartering. Um, Jeremy Hambly is one of the most legit people I know. And I, me and Jeremy, I guess we could, we could say we're friends, but it's not like we talk all the time. Um, we talk occasionally here and there. He's not someone I talk to daily or even weekly, but I know for a fact that if I have something happen that I need somebody to have my back, I know Jeremy's going to pick up the phone and say, what's up? Like, that's the type of person Jeremy Hambly is. He's a great guy, and he's always had my back, and I've told him the same thing. So... Um, you know, so whatever this, uh, it sounds, uh, this sounds very gay, this tweet, uh, from Jared, um, interestingly enough, but, uh, yeah, Jeremy Hambly's awesome guy though. Shout out to the quartering. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what that meant by, that sounded like a Royal we to me when he said that, but, um, Larry Larry says, just say it. Don't, uh, so just say, so don't give an F let's go. Exactly. Uh, Cellular Dream says, Hail Jeremy. Just want to let you know that you're my that you're gay and a fig. Thank you for reading my super chat. Have a nice day. Um, let's see. DM says, Alex Jones says, don't fall for the distractions. I mean, ultimately, yeah, that's, again, that's why I haven't made a huge kind of deal about this. I would say, ultimately, from the outside looking in, Jared seems to be the one that is wrong in the situation. I don't care about the details of a divorce. I don't care about the inner workings of a family drama because um, this is a big time spoiler for people. OK, I, I, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, this is going to be shocking to literally no one. But everything you see on social media is not real. People posting their Instagrams about how happy they are in their life and how perfect everything is in their perfect family with their perfect filters on all of their faces. And they've never had a fight. And they have a very loving relationship with their significant other. And they have perfect kids and perfect animals. And their house is perfect. And the, the lawn is always mowed. And we don't have any dirty laundry. And they don't sit around. No, it's fucking bullshit. Everybody's got fucked up shit in their life. Everybody. Nobody's life is even remotely close to being perfect. None. And so this bullshit. Stephen Crowder's going through a divorce. It's fucked up and it's dirty. And there's going to be a lot of shit that is probably going to be said 
that no one wants to know. No one wants to know what's going on in the privacy of your own home, and no one should know that shit, and no one should be judged on that shit. Because at the end of the day, we're all fucked up. All of us. That's the bottom line. So I don't care. I'm not judging Steven Crowder because he's got a nasty divorce going on. Um, the only thing I'll say is if Steven Crowder, if, it, if, it, if we find out, if we find out that Steven Crowder doesn't say the N-word in private, I will be disappointed. That is when I will cancel Steven Crowder. We better find out he says the N-word in private like every other American. Um, Gerald Armstrong says, did you see the video of Trump saying he's paying in cash? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> Filthy Gaijin says, um, they're too overt. The left is too emotional and they're throwing stuff at the wall, hoping something sticks. Um, <laughs> Anthony, what up, Anthony? What do you think about Puff Daddy? Do you reckon uh, it's, he's going to prison uh, the world and Donald Trump 2024? I don't think Puff Daddy will go to prison. I don't. Um, I hope he does if he's guilty, but I don't, I don't think he will. I think he's got way too much money and way too many connections. The tactician musician... Um, RTU has gone, uh, oh, is that um, uh, Review Tech USA has gone off the deep end since COVID. I used to look at Review Tech uh, as one of the most base YouTubers during the first Gamergate and up until 2019. And then Tactician Musician, that was one of two. Even though I knew he was a liberal, he was still based, had good gaming takes, and still does. And now he's decided to create uh, enemies. Uh, I, I do agree with that. And this is something like for me. I used to watch Review Tech USA all the time. Um, I was a huge fan of his channel, and um, I, I obviously don't eat that much anymore. Uh, that, and it's fine if he has his opinions. I don't really care. I've never spoken with him. Um, I, I have maybe I have a really narrow view of who I am and who Geeks and Gamers is. I have no idea if Rich knows who the fuck I am or Geeks and Gamers. Don't really care. But um, at the end of the day, I learn from guys like him. I learn how not to fuck up your career on YouTube. And um, and I appreciate everything that those guys do to show me everything I shouldn't do. Because, yeah, I used to be a fan of him, and now I'm not a fan. And um, I understand that I have uh, a, a few people that watch me, and I appreciate that. And I try to remember that. And the worst thing you can do as a YouTuber is think that you're not a YouTuber. It doesn't matter. And this is why PewDiePie never, ever, ever faced any true cancellation from his audience. Because PewDiePie never thought he was anything other than a YouTuber. Even though he was larger than life, even though he was a legitimate rock star, PewDiePie always thought he was just a YouTuber. And he acted as a YouTuber. And he never treated he, he, he there was like a couple times like i think one time he kind of went off on his audience and he apologized immediately like pews is that's no other person that hits that level would ever be able to stay as grounded as pewdiepie and that's why he remained and still is the goat of youtube but the worst thing you can do is like logan paul for instance logan paul logan logan paul is not a youtuber anymore um he, he's a he's a uh, a legitimate um loser celebrity at this point in time and um jake paul is not as obnoxious as logan but he's still not a youtuber anymore and then these guys like they're they will need their youtube audiences in the future again but they've kind of lost who they were and that's the worst thing you can do as a youtuber uh as a youtuber you are a normal person sitting in your basement or your bedroom or, you know, wherever you're at and you're just sitting there talking to a camera. You're not important. You're not a big fucking deal. Um, you're just a regular person and you have the privilege of letting other people support you and allow you to have the opportunities you have. And as long as you remember that, you'll be okay. So I've learned a lot from a lot of these guys that fuck it up and I appreciate their fuck ups. Because I know what not to do. Uh, Kurt Angle Stare says, um, I watched The Five for Gutfeld. Yeah, I mean, I like Greg Gutfeld. He's great. Lying dog face pony soldier. I am buying one share of Trump stock. DM says, Trump is the troll in chief. Elon is a distant second. I don't know if Elon's a distant second. They're both close, though. They're both close. 
Um, let's see. Anthony says, where do you see in 10 years' times, geeks and gamers? I'm hoping that you guys uh, make movies and TV shows and games. Your guys are the best in entertainment. Um, I mean, I there's decisions I have to make if I want geeks and gamers to grow. Um, and there's tough decisions because there are decisions that are like really like I'm a terrible businessman. Um, because I, again, talking about the whole Crowder thing and all that, and there's NDAs and all this. I've never had a person sign an NDA that's ever worked with me or worked for me or in a project with me. I've never had someone sign an NDA. I think it, I briefly flirted with the idea of NDAs because my attorney was just constantly telling me I need to have NDAs um, to protect myself because uh, people are going to come at you and then they're going to be part of your team and then they're going to leave and they're going to say all this shit about you. Fucking talk about it. There's nothing to hide. Like, what are you going to say about me that's going to hurt me? Like there's not, I don't, I don't have anything to hide. There's nothing in group chats. There's nothing in whatever I've said, I'm going to say there's nothing to hide. So I don't have NDAs. I don't do any of that shit. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, by the way. I, I want to be clear. Um, I probably should at some point, the NDA stuff might bite me in my ass, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't want to be a fucking corporate bullshit machine. I just want to be a regular dude. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, uh, Grant says, G&G opening tune is my message tone. Makes other uh, gamers look up at the store. Dude, Grant, I, 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 you have no idea how much that means to me to hear that. Like, the entire reason I created that sound was because back in the day, I would watch IGN, and IGN had their little intro, and there's a little bitty noise, and it was identifiable with IGN. I created the Geeks and Gamers intro um, with another musician, uh, or actually, he was a person that worked with me, and when he left G&G, &G, he actually just sold me the jingle that he created, paid him like 100 bucks or something like that, and... Uh, I told him, I'm like, I want it to be something that when people become fans of G&G, &G, they can use that for, like, their text message ringtone or some shit like that. The fact that you said that is fucking cool. That's awesome. That makes me really happy. That makes me really happy. So, um... Hey, hey Jeremy. Yo. Alina Haba is on the PBD podcast tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that earlier. Okay. Oh, yeah, you didn't hear that? Eric's not paying attention. Uh, do I ever pay attention to you? Not no. really. Not really. No. But yeah, we talked about it earlier, but thank you, man. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. So that really, I appreciate that. That means a lot to me to hear that. So thank you very much. Um, let's see. Kevin Beast is scanning in and not attempts uh, to get you to say gamer words. Not this time around. Oh, man. It's not a Cobra Cash stream if you're not trying to get me to say gamer words. Um, let me see. I want to make sure I haven't missed any of the... Oh, yeah. Horror Amarada says abyss. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Abyssal. Not abysmal. <laughs> Learn to read. What do you expect from me, Horror Amarada? Okay. I'm literally from Alabama. Still don't know if my parents are brother and sister. It's a damn miracle I can turn the computer on. What do you expect from me? I'm sorry, Horror Amarada. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> Abyssal. Not abysmal. I thought abysmal sounded good. I'm the abysmal critic. Come subscribe to my channel. I think that's good, actually. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let me see. Alan Tanassi says, all eyes on me, double CD or GTFO. Uh, all eyes on me is a great, great album. Uh, Tupac, that was his first album after he got out of uh, jail. And he signed with Suge Knight. My personal favorite Tupac album is it's either Me Against the World or Machiavelli. I love All Eyes on Me. All Eyes on Me is great, but I feel like he gets a little more personal on Me Against the World. Um, so, but uh, every album, every Tupac album is great. Uh, Alan Tanassi says, uh, P did he though? Uh, probably did scanning in Hail to the 199. All right, now we have to get Horror Amarada's new channel. We have to get a link and put in there because I fucked up the name. You got to do that for me, Eric. All right, see if you can track that down or she can just DM you on Twitter. We need to get a link to her channel. We got to get people to subscribe to it now. How, and I need to know how many subscribers. Um, call me back, culture. Call me back right now. I'll take the call. Call me back. Call me back. 
I will answer your phone call right now. Let's see if he calls back. Culture Casino is going to go on. I saw your call, but I was like, is this an emergency? Like, I don't talk to Culture that much. So I was like, I don't want to put him on the spot in front of 2,000 people. Culture Casino, what's Dude, up? <laughs> how, how much stock did you buy, bro? Because I know you. I haven't bought any stock on Truth. Should I? Oh, dude, did you see what it did today? No. Holy cow, bro. No, dude, in two days, this thing's rocketing up. Like, it's at $66.22, man. It started just below 50. So, you know, it's doing all right. You know what I mean? Dude, $8.23 today, man. I don't see, I, I don't do a whole lot of the stock stuff. So, like, if uh, maybe you got to give me some advice here on this, so we're gonna have to have no, a no, call. No, 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 no. You've got to have a call with Italian, bro. I'm not gonna give you stock advice. But I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> I'm very excited, dude. You can actually invest in Trump and his campaign. This is a like a crazy end around, right? It's just freaking phenomenal, man. I'm loving this every moment of it, dude. All right, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. All right, all right, all right. All right, I, all right I I just right, don't know. Right. I'm a, I'm I, I don't even know how to start though. I've never done the stock options and stuff like that, dude. so. Dude, it'll be fine. You, you, you'll be good, man. You just, like, go grab an account. Like, I, even if it's fucking Schwab, which is shit. But go, you know, just grab one. And okay. go out there, drop drop both balls in it, and talk to value bill for sure. You know, because, you know, we, we talk. But do me, do, do me one favor in Vegas. Uh -huh. In Vegas, just tell me how rich you are. Hey. Because of, because of this. No, because of this stock. Because in two okay. weeks, I, I have a feeling this thing's going to be... This thing's gonna be good, man. I, 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 dude, I'm surprised you're not bumping it hard. Dude. Well, I, yeah, I, I've you're never my favorite Trump supporter. I know, like, I, you know, I've always thought about how I want to be like uh, Dave Portnoy in terms of like Barstool Sports, and he does like the whole Davy Day, yeah. the Davy Day Trader. So maybe we need to do a Cobra Day Trader. All right. Yeah, dude, I freaking I buy into that. You know that. Okay. I'm you all the time. All dude, right. And, and dude, I love this show. Keep it up, brother. Love you to death. Keep Thank you. Shout out to Culture Casino. Appreciate Bye, you, bro. Brother. Later, man. All right, Culture Casino says, sure, take Valiant's call on stream, not me. How much Donald J. Uh, Tr Donald J. Trump stock did you get, man? Are you crazy rich white boy now? I, yeah, I don't. I, I've completely, like, I don't know anything about stocks. So, um, but I'll do it right now, okay? I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't know what I'm doing, but Culture, he'll get a thank you for it. Shout out to Culture Casino. He's awesome. D-Day Cobra Day Trader. <laughs> <clears throat> culture getting rich um nocturnal says um the real impact is economic it's going uh to really mess with a lot of things over the next five years or and more i would not discount an attack out of hand for that reason uh um, yeah i heard that d-day trader says legalize adulthood and legalize adulthood for 10 says my knitters be in Vegas if you're looking for some fun. Then come down to Dino's Lounge Thursday through Saturday and join me for some karaoke. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Trunk Stop might be the next GameStop stock. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I remember the whole GameStop thing. Like it, 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 got, it went crazy and then it crashed or something like that. Again, I, I don't know the stock market, so I can't speak to it. Um... Steel Leg of History says, thanks for your kindness and support. My new laptop just arrived today. Been busy setting it up. Can't wait to learn how to do intros and be blessed. I know we got that one earlier. So Sophie says, Jeremy, let me know when you're going to, uh, when you get gifties. Want to make sure no problems. Uh, also, vid. I do have your vid pulled up. So towards the end, we're going to, we're going to watch it. Um, let's see. If you buy now, sell near the end of August, Jeremy, says Slap Murphy. Uh, you know who, pro I don't know if Ryan knows about this shit. So let's see. I'll ask Ryan knows. Typically, Ryan knows something about everything. Um, that's just how he is. Jake CB says the value is not only in truth social. It is also perceived value in Trump media groups, future ventures, uh, developing uh, patents, Trump TV and other IP. OK. All right. Zeke DeWise says, good, uh, Jeremy, chat later. Hey, take it easy, brother. Uh, Philip Butler says, uh, let's see, Joe Lieberman talks third party, then trips and dies. Um, Fantastic Bruce Knox says, why the hell is Jared so invested in the divorce between Crowders? My guess is Jared wants Crowder's sloppy seconds thoughts. 
it's just not a good it's not a good situation man it really isn't uh the diddler says they still haven't found me uh got to go uh dm says kathy grifter calls us fascist badge of honor absolutely Kurt Engel Stair says, uh, Bongino talked about it. Only thing he can verify is that the crew already hit something else previous to this and also that DEI was involved. That doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Aaron Bacon says, fewer witnesses to say anything is easier to cover up. Lord of the Re says, uh, <laughs> dang it, Lord of the Re. <laughs> Whoo! Lord of the Rings says gain, you know, like gain detergent. Uh, Igers from outer space. And if you say that fast, you might have a slightly different outcome than uh, <laughs> mine. <laughs> uh, Dirty Jersey says, uh, let's see, think the song was We Ain't Hard to Find. I don't remember that one on Machiavelli. We Ain't Hard to Find is not on Machiavelli, I don't think. Um, not not that a song, a title, a song of that title. Let me look. Machiavelli song list. Machiavelli song list. Um, let's see. Mm. Got to be careful. All right, here, here's Machiavelli song list right here. If I can pull this up. All right, here we go. Yeah, so uh, Hail Mary, which is an awesome song. Toss It Up. Uh, to Live and Die in L.A., Blasphemy, Life of an Outlaw, Just Like Daddy, Crazy, White Man's World, Me and My Girlfriend, Hold Your Head, Against All Odds. I feel like it was probably Blasphemy or Toss It Up is the one I was talking about. Um, but I'm not sure. I remember that song, White Man's World, and everybody, like, people thought it was racist. It was like, if you listen to what he's saying, he's actually calling out black people. Uh, you know. Uh, Matthew Hammond says, please go, uh, please go see Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead for Modern Audiences. When it's released, uh, you can take Ryan with you. Uh, toss it up, this Dr. Dre. Okay, what's up, uh, Rodimus Primal? Um, yeah, I'm not going to go see that. I did a reaction to the trailer over on Geeks and Gamers. You guys can check that out if you want. It is terrible. Uh, Legalized Adulthood says, They call me Mr. Griggs. Uh, I don't need no NDA because I'm pure as snow. Suck it. Yeah, one day maybe. But again, nothing wrong with NDAs. So, Ministry of Wrong Things is not to burst your bubble. They straight up shut down game stop uh, stock. Do you think they won't do the same to stop Trump? That's true. Again, that's not a world I know. So that's why, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty dumb on that whole topic. Uh, Jimmy Ray says Trump needs to take out a loan on Mar-a-Lago to pay his bond. No, I, I think Trump doesn't need to pay anything because he hasn't done anything wrong. It's absolute bullshit what they're doing to him. It's absolute bullshit. Uh, PJ says, Waters is the best. I know you don't uh, drink, but damn, Greg Gutfeld, Tyrus, and Johnny Joey Jones are all better. I like Tyrus, too. Um, I mean, those are good guys, but I, I like Jesse Waters. Um, Joe C says, I got two friends uh, that work at Lockheed uh, Skunk Works. They're both Trump guys, but told me he won't be elected. I asked them if it was because of war. They both just smiled and gave me a blank look. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's no doubt that people, that the powers that be are going to do everything they can to stop him, but I think Trump will prevail. This is the return of the MAGA king. Um, let me see. Culture Casino with five gifted memberships to the Snake Pit. PJ says, anyone going to Vegas, shout me out in the chat, please. I have a little something for the Snake Pit attendees. Look at there. That's awesome. Vegas is soon. Can't wait. Dara Muth says, hey, Fig Jeremy, uh, are you the... Uh, are you try the raid feature on Rumble yet? All you do is raid in the URL. Have fun, you rigger. LOL. Is there a raid feature now? That's awesome. I did not know that, but uh, I'm happy that they do have that. I'll have to try it out. And then um, they need to get gifted memberships on Rumble as well. Um, 
All right. And then we've got member messages. Oh, never mind. We've got JD. Uh, let's see. JD Corey says, uh, am I a bad uncle? My niece used to have a unicorn backpack for school. She is seven. The backpack has now been replaced by the 199. She loved it. That is awesome. I respect that. The Blind Lawyer says, the people support Trump because uh, we can reject talking heads on either side. Daily Wire, MSNBC does not make a difference. We ignore both. Uh, John Witzkis says, hey, Jeremy, when you do your next uh, video or reading an article written by SJW, can you do the soy voice uh, till you can't no more? It's hilarious. That soy boy voice is really tough to pull off. Um, it really is. Uh Papa Z says, uh, we are in the pit. Uh, Dragon Dan says, I know you're not guest heavy on Cobra Cast, but I think it'd be fun to have Melanie Mack to discuss a topic. Also, I can't wait for Benny to show up. Yeah, Melanie's great. Um, it'd be cool to have her on. Drew Bar says, Snake Pit 199. Uh, Gremlin with the Snake Pit. What's up, Gremlin, who's always dropping those massive gifties over on Geeks and Gamers? We appreciate you, brother. Bastard Luigi says, an angry Shapiro growls, uh, let's see, kosherly, uh, through his teeth. Uh, Chunk the Punk, what up? So shout out to my auntie watching her first Cobra cast while visiting us. Hail the 199. Duck Fizney, let's go, Brandon. MAGA. Chunk the Punk's. Um, auntie is watching Cobra Cast, so hail to Chunk the Punk's auntie. That is great. Um, and I apologize for all of my language, uh, just because, uh, you know, you're probably a respectful person, whereas I'm not. Uh, Mash says, John Stewart just got busted for fraud after railing on Trump for doing the same thing. Those who preach the loudest have the most to hide every damn time. Every time. I uh, did see the John Stewart stuff. Uh, Black Tailgate says, uh, we need a Mentos emoji. Uh, Tommy No Figure says, Trump 2024. Blabs Tower Tart says, you should compare Don Lemon video views to a nerdotic square up. Sweet Potato Knight says, Carrie Lake leaked a friend's call. Uh, what? Wh was she wrong or Crowder wrong or right? Hailed the 199. Well, wasn't she being threatened in that call? Um, if I'm not mistaken, she was, she was, what was the content? And I know I listened to that call. They were basically, he was trying to basically threaten her with changing her position, correct? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a line of everything. So literally nothing in life is like, you should, like, there's always exceptions to the rule, okay? Steven Crowder and Jeremy Boring's phone call, that was just two friends. Like, S Steven Crowder and Jeremy Boring were talking about personal shit, and then it evolved into a discussion about a contract. There was nothing bad about what Jeremy Boring said in that phone call. Like, but if you leak a private phone call, you can spin it. The Carrie Lake situation, they were trying to bribe her to not run for Senate. That's fuck, that's a whole different level. So no, that's a that's a different level right there. Different level. Specifically bribing her. Like there was no like interpretation with that like it was point blank that's what they were doing link okanobi says my cousin sent me a poster that's making fun of uh the acolyte uh it's on my twitter account i'm looking forward to seeing you in vegas on thursday hail the 199 absolutely lying dog face pony soldier with the gift of membership thank you anthony with the gift of membership thank you lying dog face pony soldier hail 2200 people in here brandon day welcome to the snake pit tweeted tone welcome to the snake pit emmanuel with five gifted memberships horror amarada with five gifted memberships dara muth says uh link to how to use rumble raid also gifted subs are being talked about to be determined though all right all right, I'm looking forward to that. Lying Dog Face Pony Soldier with another gifted membership. Thank you. And, um, yeah, so uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to what Rumble's going to do. Um, right, Kick has been great to us as well. And I'll be honest, like, if Kick, like, I I don't know what's going on with Rumble. Like, they're, sometimes they'll talk to us. It feels like Rumble's halfway interested and halfway not interested, which doesn't make sense to me. Um with all the gaming stuff going on right now, man, Rumble could be a game changer if they would get prominent nerd geek voices over there right now. Um, but I think the biggest mistake, and again, this is, you know, this is why I'm a bad businessman. I've just been on Rumble and we've grown our channel and we give them content. So they really don't have a reason to pay us. And so they'll pay other people that 
that don't come to Rumble because <laughs> they don't have them, but they're getting everything from Geeks and Gamers right now. We got 75,000 followers on the main account and over 200,000 followers on all of our accounts. So they're literally getting what they would want to pay for anyway. I guess they could get extra stuff out of us, but if I was to stop posting on Rumble for like six months, I could probably get a contract out of them that would be very beneficial to G&G, but... Fuck it. I'm just going to keep doing what I do, um, and the chips will fall where they may. But uh, I appreciate you guys that watch us over on Rumble. Uh, and uh, you got to play ball, I guess. It's almost like the – I remember, like, when I used to have DirecTV, and DirecTV would, like, run these ads, and they're like, for new customers, you come to DirecTV, you get a free – NFL Sunday ticket subscription, free HBO, free Cinemax, free this, free that. And I'm like, what the fuck? I've been with you for five years. Why don't I get some free shit? And it's like, well, you're already here. Fuck you. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. It's kind of fast what Rumble does with people, you know? They're like, well, you're already here. We want to pay for the people that aren't here. Like, ah, okay. Punished for being here, I guess. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Uh Let's see. And I'm trying to catch up, make sure I'm caught up. I think I'm caught up. Did, I, did you put that in the chat, uh, Jed? Uh, let's see, Jed. Okay, you did put it there. Okay. So Sophie's got this video that she wants me to play. So let's see here. The Fellowship sings or signs. Okay, let's see. I don't know what we're about to watch, but I'm going to trust Sophie on this one. Okay, here we go. Uh, Sophie says, you're a Pisces like me. I finally feel seen. I'm going to be honest with you. No offense to anybody. I don't give a fuck about my sign, okay? I've had people ask me, like, what's your sign? I'm like, that's for women and gay men. A few <laughs> moments later. Ryan, what is your sign? Scorpio. Oh, God, you fucking knew the answer. <laughs> so fucking gay. <laughs> Like everybody, men talking know about their sign is gay. I'm we not, had this I'm, conversation. I'm, I'm answering what it is, you dumb fuck. If somebody asks me what sign, I'm like, I don't about, know. I don't know anything about what it means or what it fucking. I just know I'm a Scorpio. I think it's super gay. And I took that personally. Approximately ten hours later. Hell, one nine nine. Can I ask what your zodiac signs are? I'm a Capri Sun, a Capricorn. My zodiac sign is I am a Capricorn. I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, real I'm life? a Sagittarius. <laughs> Me too. I'm a Sagittarius. It is Aquarius. I am a real Aquarian. I'm Aries. I'm I'm a typical uh, Aries. I've started many businesses. I'm entrepreneurial. No ripper. What's your zodiac sign? Uh, hell, the one I'm not Aries. And so I'm a Gemini. <laughs> Gemini. I think. I'm the best. Scorpio here too. Scorpio. Oh, oh God. I'm a cancer. I'm a Libra. <laughs> I'm a Libra, and that, that basically means everything I say is fair and balanced, right? I'm a Leo. I'm a double Leo. Leo? 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 Gabe? I'm a Leo. 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 I am a Leo. Leo's, yeah! That's right! <laughs> Right, ah. Matthew. I'm a, I'm a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. Uh, <laughs> I'm pi I'm fish. It? I'm like a cop. Fishy, fishy, Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> Pisces. Oh no. Between oh no, <laughs> we said oh no. Oh, oh no. The most My disappointing of the. All right, yeah, it's all good. Uh, I'm a Taurus. I was born in September. You're a Virgo, yeah. I don't even know. I think it's, I think it's Virgo. <laughs> yeah, technically speaking. Virgos are uh, the most serial killers. <laughs> yeah, you're a Virgo. Sophie, you started a big rant there. <laughs> That's just how I feel about it. All right. Okay. That was fantastic, Sophie. That was fantastic. You should make this you should make this listed where people can watch this. Are you willing to do that? That was really good. And I encourage more of you to do stuff like this. Um, these little edits of things like that. I encourage everybody to do stuff like this because it's great. So that was awesome, Sophie. First of all, I apologize, Sophie, for taking so long to react to that. Uh, but that was really good. I was actually really impressed with that. So you 1,000% should. Can I drop the link in the chat, Sophie? Do you mind? Um, I'll wait for your permission before uh, I, uh, I do that. But that's really good. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay, cool. 
All right, so I'll drop the link in the chat right now. Let's see here. Where's my screen at? Here we go. Here's the link in the chat. And did we get uh, Horror Amarada's um, um, YouTube channel linked, Eric? Were we able to do that? Yeah, there I put it, it in like 10 times. So. Okay, perfect. All right. Shout out to Horror Amarada. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, Sophie, that was really good work. Really appreciate that. So, um, and yeah, I encourage all of you to do more stuff like that. This is how Perry Chan kind of got connected with, with Gary and everything was him just doing like little fan edits of stuff. And, and you see what Perry Chan's been able to do with, uh, with Gary has been fantastic. So yeah, that's good stuff. Um, all right. John Kennedy says, um, let's see, let Melanie, Matt, Krista and Stephanie know I'm a Libra. <laughs> I will let them know. <laughs> uh, Lord of the Reese says I'm a cancer, uh, not astrology, just in general swords and starships says commander. You Gary drinker and the fellowship have given me a free education on how to build a channel, be humble and a class act. Fuck uh, the Ripa jealousy. You all give me a gift beyond price. Well, thank you. Um, listen, the stuff that's all the stuff with Ripa is it's honestly like I'm not going to talk about all that shit publicly. I am laughing my ass off behind the scenes at how many people Ripa is every fucking thing the man says, every, every facial expression he makes on a stream they're breaking it down they're like breaking it down to like this weird kind of like meaning and shit and it's so funny and i'm like okay like you see whose channels are growing and whose aren't growing it's all i'm saying but it is fucking funny and uh yeah i think it should keep on because ripaverse is crushing it and <laughs> Nobody that's crushing, that's going after Ripa is growing. Uh, the real smile bit for five kick subscriptions. Five kick subscriptions. Thank you, real smile bit. Don't forget, 95% cut over there on kick. 95. Um, by the way, we're going to start doing daily on... Um, I'm going to try to get that started very soon. Getting daily on uh, kick is going to be on uh, Geese Gamers Daily will be on Kick as well as obviously Rumble and YouTube. So looking forward to that. Um, let's see. Fantastic Mr. Knox says, I'm an Aries. Look at what you got started, Sophie. Uh, Schick says, Jeremy, you are the best fig on YouTube. Um, let's see. BFSD says, I love Tupac. Uh, I love the chorus for Hail Mary memorized. And Dear Mama is one of the most emotional rap songs I ever heard. Absolutely love that song. Yeah, uh, Tupac is incredible. Uh, Tupac is incredible. Um, let's see. Uh, Sally Ito gifted five D-Day Cobra memberships. Thank you, Sally Ito. Um, yeah, Tupac is phenomenal. Let's see. Sophie says, to clarify, I don't believe in that. Just trolling for the representation thing. But Jeremy was so triggered, uh, was hilarious, had so much fun making it. It was fantastic. It really was. So shout out to you, Sophie. That was really cool. Um, again, thank you all for, for everything you guys do. Again, don't forget a couple things. Um, Geeksandgamers.com, if you have not signed up for an account over there, it's free. And uh, we're just trying to get everything kind of situated. We're still work working on the new website. Once that switchover happens, uh, your accounts will, you know, obviously switch over. And um, we are going to, we're putting some stuff into that, and I'm really excited about it. So more to come on that. And CobraCast could, like, n nothing will be affected as the current CobraCast, but... I might try to give you more CobraCast on the website. So it's not taking away from current CobraCast, but I might try to add more CobraCast on the website. So we'll see about that. Um, but my rule is always that I can't take away something that I already offer uh, for free. Um, so I would have to do more if I was going to offer more. But I would never, ever take away something that's already offered. Uh, that would be fucked up and very... Uh, I'm not going to say Tim Pool esque because, you know, we're, we're, we're on the same page here. Get Trump elected. That's all that matters. No more pot shots, Jeremy. Just move forward. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all goes. I'm looking forward to what we're going to do on the website. We are less than 100 likes from Sexy Back End. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? We shall see. I don't know. Um, but we still got, like, 2,000 people here, and we have 300? 300 on Rumble? Uh 
and a whopping 12 on kick. Now, I wonder how many people would be watching on kick if we were just on kick. That's what I want to know. How many people would just be watching us on kick if we were only on kick? I'm not saying we are going to do that. I was just curious how many. Maybe 200. Maybe 200. You think? I don't know. We'll see. Um, mm -mm. Ben says, uh, Tim never voted for Donnie. He talks about that nonstop. He, vote, he voted for Trump. He voted for Trump in 2020. According to Tim, he did. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he voted for him in 2020. 2016, I don't think he did. I don't think he did in 2016, but he did in 2020. Am I right about that? Pretty sure. Um, Tweeted Tone says, Jeremy is a fig fish. You know what? Big Fish is one of the best movies ever. If you have not seen Big Fish from Tim Burton, that is a great movie. That is a phenomenal movie. Tim Burton's kind of hit or miss for me on a lot of his stuff. I love his Batman movies, but some of his other stuff is really bad. Big Fish is phenomenal. If you have not seen Big Fish, you should be watching Big Fish immediately. Excellent movie. Excellent storytelling. Excellent messaging. Excellent family dynamic. Very emotional. Great fucking movie. Great fucking movie. So I highly recommend that one. Uh, all right. And... We're closing in on 1,500 likes, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to make it? And, of course, Alina Haba will be on with Patrick Bet David tomorrow, so I'm sure we will discuss that. Don't forget, tomorrow night, D-Day Cover 199, playing Helldivers tomorrow night. Ryan Kennel, Drunk 3PO, Fear the Beardo, and D-Day Cobra for democracy, for freedom. It will be happening. Um, Jeremy is a big fish and a big fig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Second headlines. I still have to watch that. Solid State Citizen. Uh, I still. People have said that I need to watch that movie. I've not seen Second Hand Lions. And I, a lot of people in the chat told me it's a really good movie. So I will have to go check that. I have to go check that one out. Um, mm -mm -mm. For democracy, let's go. All right, we are at. Uh, we are less. We're thirty-seven likes away. Thirty-seven. We're going to make it. I don't think we're going to make it. We may have just to end the show with no sexy back in. It's sad. Sad. Uh, Jeremy likes big fish the long way. <laughs> oh, man. Good family movie. What would that be? Secondhand Lions? I'm interested to see it. I have not seen that. Um, Lady Aaron D in the house says, smash the like button, chat. Um, Liberty. T Baggin says, my dude, Mr. P. And we are at 1,500 likes. It is time for the sexy back end, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. D Day Cobra 199 is proud to present to you tonight's sexy back end. Boom! Look at that. $1,100 in chat revenue should rank us in the top. 10 in the United States of America, 118 new members, 118 new members. Holy shit. Whew. Another banger of a night. Thank you guys for the support you give me. It really is amazing. And, uh, you know, I don't know what to say other than thank you. And every time we do this, I, I get humbled and I go, why do you guys like me? Why do you support me? I don't know. But as long as I, uh, as long as you do it, I guess that means I'm doing something right. So I'll keep doing it. And uh, if I mess up, I will obviously um, try to address that. But I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode of CobraCast 199. And uh, we will be back on Friday. And uh, don't forget, if you are in the market for a PC, you can go to Meta PCs and you can use the promo code 199, and that helps us out. And it obviously, um, you know, Meta PCs has been great to us, and, um, you know, they uh, they don't care about uh, cancel culture and all that other bullshit. They just, uh, they're based as hell, and uh, we really appreciate them. So Meta PCs, promo code 199, and uh, you can get a discount, and it helps us out over here at G&G. &G. So, uh, and there's Can Man with the code right there. So thank you, Can Man. Um, all right, so with that said, we're going to end it. Uh, Tweetatone says, 
Tuesday night's main event, Daily and Cobra Cast, is everything I wanted from G&G since 2017. I remember when you barely went live. Keep it up, Jeremy. Amazing work. Thank you, Tweeted Tone. Yeah, I mean, it. I go through... Um, I, I'm trying to... One thing that's been, like, Gary has been so good at is he's consistently been doing the uploads and making videos, and he's also, um, you know, uh, been really good at live streaming. And I tend to focus on one or the other, and I'm trying to do both now. Um, and especially with the Geeks and Gamers, we've actually gotten a really good sub bump lately because I've been making videos over there. And this channel's doing its thing, too. Um, uh, look at this. Let me find it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. The last upload on this channel... It's it's kind of crazy, and I mean I don't know if like I don't know if you can take that to like, but the last upload on this channel has six hundred thousand views. Look at this, the last upload has six hundred and seventeen thousand views. That is crazy, and I know I need to upload more. But, I mean, the channel's doing pretty good. You got 617,000 views, 21,000, 173,000, 142,000, 122, 155. And then, you know, these are fall, these fell off. But we, we've had some good videos on this channel. We've had some good videos on this channel. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, so I do need to make more videos over here as well. Um, it's just a matter of trying to find the time. Uh, but we will... Uh, we will get through it. And uh, But thank you guys so much. You guys have been awesome tonight. I really appreciate it. And um, go over, like I said, check us out on Geeks and Gamers. Uh, I'll be making more uploads over there talking about all the Gamergate stuff. We'll have Geeks and Gamers Daily tomorrow and uh, Helldivers tomorrow night. And it looks like I'm going to be on Open Bar tomorrow with the Critical Drinker. So that's going to be fun and interesting to talk about that. So I love you all. I appreciate you all. Have a great night. And we will talk to you later.
and we are out, ladies and gentlemen. I see Alan Tanasi dropping a 20 during the outro and says, The Bog Fish Doe. Thank you, Alan Tanasi, with the 20. And again, shout out to uh, all of you guys. I appreciate it. It's been an awesome night, really fun. I'll see you for Geeks and Gamers Daily in the morning. You guys have been fantastic on those streams as well. So uh, thank you all for allowing me the opportunity. Hope you all have a good night. Take care of yourselves, take care of your family, and we will talk to all of you later. Bye, everyone.